All right, everyone. Welcome to another Friday night fight. Sorry for the hiatus for the past few weeks. I was uh, working on some stuff during the Fridays, but today we are back with some Friday night fight action on patch 4.2.2. I am almost losing track of the hot patches, hot fixes these days since CA is a lot more frequent in terms of just updating the game, which is a good thing. I do think that it's uh, way better than what we had over the previous year um, with the lack of updates and uh, yeah balancing to the game uh, and uh, one of the most important thing is that Kairos lost his regrowth and the Patriarch lost the Dars Brazier so two very I mean two rather OP healing uh, are gone from two different rosters and things are looking quite a bit better uh, in the um, recent patches now. I'm not sure if uh, Katarin's uh, ice sled is still is off the handcuffs yet, but 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 the bird is free. The bird is free. We are unleashing Kairos onto the battlefield now. All right, kids left Siege Beastman. Anyways, we are we are playing against a uh, Persian warrior right now. And uh, he's going for Kislev, Teench, Beastman, Banning, Gr Grand Cathay, Kislev, and Lizardman. Ooh, banning all the meta factions now, eh? Um, in that case, in that case, um, I feel like I'm maining Empire for quite a bit these days. So, like, I'm more, I'm rather familiar with Empire, but I don't know. Should I? I'm a I'm in a bit of a conundrum on what faction to pick right now. Oh and uh I have a different Ooh, I have a different this uh, okay screen blocker. I need to set up a new screen ball locker these days since I have a different uh setup now. And uh yeah I need to Anyways, um we do have to figure out what factions are we using. Um, for this one. And I am, uh, I'm very undecisive on that. Um... Let me just add this. For later. I'm not gonna use it now, because I... I don't really care for myself. Um, it's for later. For later. Alright, cool, um... Kids love teen uh, beastmen. I do. I want to use Bretonia. Uh, uh. Hmm. I think I'll go. I'll go high elves then. Uh, let me see. I kind of forgot the band system. Um, yeah, pick one, band one for the player two. Yep, yep, yep. Good. We're going high elf spanning, spanning kids left. So it is. We're fighting either Teen or Beastman, and Teen might have some interesting stuff on the field. I don't know. We shall see. But yeah. Let's uh, wait for Persian Warrior to come up with his faction. It has to be Teen or Beastman. Since I'm banning Kizla from uh, his uh, free picks. Now, High Elves didn't actually receive that many buffs in the... Ooh, ooh we're, we're fighting Teen now, the updated Teen. Let's see what happens with this one. But I do have... Uh, hmm... I do have a feeling there's gonna be a lot of uh, Teen Knights. Ooh. And I also have to be careful of the change bringers. Should I just get a Phoenix and. Uh, I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, yeah, let's just get a Phoenix and may. Do I really want Imrek though? I. <laughs> uh, let's just Let's just get. Uh us and see what happens. I don't even know. And I don't care enough to know. Um, but yeah. Uh, 
Uh, okay, do we have flame resistance? We have flame fire resistance, right? Yep, we do. So, what we're gonna do is, uh... Should I even bother about regrow? Uh, let's just net up Emin talk and then... Um... Bird. Scroll of Hoeth. Power recharge. Increase cooldown. Use... This would be nice, actually. Uh, the the. I don't think we need Kindle Flame on this one. Um, shoot of Safari, Greater Arcane Corner, wait, Potion of Shroy, Bound Fiery Convocation would be neat if we are, we have to deal with a bunch of infantry and whatnot. But yeah, anyways. Um, yeah, we are getting double pigeon. Um, let's see, Sylvan Guard, two of them, and then a bunch of these bo bad boys and. I don't know what to do. What to do with the teenage armored cavalry? Eh, let's just get a couple of phoenix guards and see what happens. I don't even know. Um, and oof. Okay, the 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 core is getting a bit too expensive now, eh? Uh, maybe I should get something else then. Tackless is too expensive. Um. Hmm. Alario the Radiant? Nah. Imric, Imric. Oh, uh, well, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll go Imric. Um, there we go. Star lands. And we need to get some healing for the guy. Oh my god, I'm picking meta high elves now. No! Earth blood. Um, yeah, we can turn everything off. Actually, Book of Work would be pretty neat. And then we need just. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's mostly fine. Mostly. But we don't have any mobility, which is a concern. So, I guess I'll just get another, get some Reaver archers. Yeah, that will do. I don't even know if this is gonna work, but we shall see. We shall see. No Dragon Prince? Uh, right, we don't have money for Dragon Princes, so... Yeah, no Dragon Prince. Wait, Dragon Prince would be a... Eh, nah, it's fine. It's fine. We'll, we'll try to go Phoenix. Whatever. I mean, what's the point of bringing a full meta Dragon Prince build, right? Yeah. But yeah, we're not gonna bring Dragon Prince. Like, uh, I wanted to try Phoenix for this one, because especially there might be change bringers. I don't know, but there might just be a change bringer that, that shows up, and then uh, I don't have anything to counteract the aerial pressure other than the Lovin Sea God who will be busy fighting off backline threats. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. High Elves versus Tinja would bring Talons of Torgavo. Uh, that, that sounds pretty... That doesn't sound like a bad option, yeah. Um, Tyrion, Methylcaster, and Dragon Prince. Ah, right, I forgot about Tyrion. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's too late to change now. We are going in with Imric. I haven't played High Elves for quite a while right now, so like... <laughs> I actually don't know much about their meta. All right, we shall see what happens here. Lothen Seagard. Lothen Seagard. We will obey. Lothen Seagard. All right, cool. And let's hope our spear front line hold can hold. If it doesn't, then we're fucked. Simple as that. Spearman. It shall be done. Any 
Reloading for Caledon. I actually have no idea whether Phoenix would be a good idea, but we shall see. Silvering, Silvering becoming more popular. Yeah, I think I've seen Silvering Gods a lot more in recent matches. Ballista is mandatory against the grinder. Well, too late now. We can't change it. Um, so let's see if we can actually move on to the next stage or we're going to shut down right now. So, But yeah, Persian Royal Warrior is a really good player. So yeah, I'm not too confident in this one. Let's see. Um, yeah. Exalted Flamer, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I'm not going full meta here, because obviously my opponent isn't going full meta either. Oh boy! No! No! Not the flames! Oh wow! Okay, okay, they, they are- they do quite- Whoa! I didn't realize Exalted Flamers do that now! This is actually not bad! Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> oh, they hurt, they hurt a lot, ah! Oh, and the and of course there's that thing. Oh shit, we actually have to push. Oh boy. I didn't realize the flavors of change does that this awful thing now. Holy shit! All right, um, let's just shoot that guy out. There's nothing. Oh shit, I, I kind of left him out there. Alright, anyways. Let's just uh, send our Phoenix to poop on those guys. Oh wow, Exalted Flamer actually is not obsolete right now. Interesting. Let's see if we can just coop this and break these marauders. Onward. Oh shit. He didn't catch it. Behold, Not great. Ow, 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 ow. Move on. That hurts a lot. Oh shit, I forgot to- hmm. Yeah, the, the problem of getting a new setup is you have to reset all the battle controls, which I can't really do it in the middle of battle. Not great, whatever. Hmm. Alright, this can run. Shoot them. Oh. Uh, you can come back and see if you can do anything about it. Ooh, this is bad. Lord of Dragons, this guy. Not that I have any choice. Seeking the foe. Asa, withdraw. Acknowledged. Acknowledged. You will obey. Seal. Upward mage. Advance. A pace. By your command. 
Oh my god, I- Oh god! The Exalted Flamers are actually good now, what the fuck? Target, whatever. Illyrian archers defending order. Calidors chosen. Open mage. Glory be. Forward. Somehow we are still kind of. Relatively even in terms of balance of power, this is weird, but uh, I'll take it. High elves doing high elves things, I suppose, but anyways. We need to get our infant- Oh no, we lost our healing! No! Oh well, whatever. Not that we can do anything about it now. And the worst thing is we can't actually bail her out. Uh... Eradicate them! Or everything just rush into do some melee attack. I don't give a shit anymore. Prince Imric. The dragons roar. Alright, can we dump some pigeon poop here? Alright, that is some really good damage. Holy shit. Alright, see if we can pressure some stuff off. Alright, didn't we kind of clutch it out? We... Oh no, we... yeah, we totally lost those heal healing now. Yeah. Not great. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> they have the colossal. They have the abilities and all that and whatnot. Uh, we tried trying to survive. We need to pin him down. Uh, yeah. Alright, uh, we, we just have to pressure, keep pressuring that guy with, uh, with whatever we can. Fine. Not that we have any. Twenty more seconds. All right, we might have just have to take the fight. All right, we are doing damage, but we are also taking damage, which is not great. Imric might actually go down, which, and in that case, I don't really have. A oh, Imric got slain! No! <laughs> Oh, uh, if we have a bit more healing, if... I mean, that's a big if, after all, but yeah, still. Good news. Uh, everything is route. What the fuck? Uh. Uh? The fuck, bro? You came back like that? Anyways, um, let's see if we can just drop a sneaky regrowth on this guy. Oh, you came back too late. Just shoot wherever you can. Oh no, we're gonna get army lost losses. Oh man, that hurts a lot. Oh, ah. Ow! Yeah, I think that's army losses. Oh, he, she came back too late! Ah! Cries. 
Right on the line, yeah. <laughs> ah. GG to version warrior and he will be moving on to the next stage. Very good use of the exalted flamer. They are actually good now. Oh my god. Oh. That the vortex is after the projectiles exploded. Oh shit, I need to use the exalted flamers more then and just try to test them out. I did not realize they got the interesting interesting buff. Interesting buff to the flamers. They got some really good value against my archer line. They're, they are anti-infantry now. My god. Um, but yeah, other than that, Imrek did, did well. He did well. He, he, he did his best. Unfortunately, I was not able to use him well. Wasn't the Exalted Flamer a prime single... Single entity killer? I... Uh, oh, god damn it. Uh, SE killer? Yeah. So... Anyways, um, yeah, wasn't the Exalted and Flamer a Prime SE killer previously? Yes, they were. But now, it seems that they added that interesting Vortex effect, and they actually do good against infantry formations now. Very good use of the Exalted Flamer, and I like the use of the Chaos Lord of Teen, a very good duelist. Oh my god, 2700 gold worth of damage value against my double monsters. Ooh, he, 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 he is a good duelist, for sure. Um, and the Sandigol mix like these four Sandigors are a very interesting choice these Sandigors Dantigors um these Dantigors are an interesting choice um I guess they were there to deal with in case any heavy cavalry of the high elves I didn't bring any but doesn't matter they ran some interference and that is exactly what they needed to do but uh yeah overall very good use of the exalted flamers there used up all their ammo and earned back their value for sure while I uh wasn't able to use the Loaf and Sea God properly because I changed my setup and uh, yeah, they were on skirmish mode and uh, for some reason instead of guard mode. Let me just uh, go into the options and start changing them back. Sorry, uh, no default guard mode. I'm just gonna turn off all the default modes. Uh, hybrid units. Yeah, that will slow motion ability targeting. Yeah, that would do. All right, that is our first game. Embarrassing enough, I lost. Um, but we will uh, hopefully find another game from other players and uh, get some action going. Now, we've seen Persian Warrior. Let's see, Jayama and Sipa, are you still in the chat? If you guys are, then um, can you set up a lobby so I can join and spectate you guys? Oh, wow, we are getting a lot of replays. Nice. Uh, CJDH. Okay, cool. Let me just quickly reply to some Discord messages and then we can go back. Uh, we can see. Wait, hold on. Hold on. All right, cool, cool, cool. We're, we have a lobby up. We have a lobby ready for battle. And it's Sipa and Jayama. Oh boy, let, let's go. Um, let me just up the screen blocker. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, we've blocked. We've blocked what we need to block. All oh, good. Chaos Dwarfs versus the Empire. Let's go. Um. Hmm. Interesting matchup. I don't. I think the Empire, as an Empire, uh, player, I think I suffered at the hands of this matchup quite a bit. Um, simply because of the armored infantry push and the. 
very tough backline of the Chaos Dwarves, but we shall see what the Chaos Dwarves and the Empire will bring for this matchup. We can turn off the screen blocker now. Yep, we have, um... Wait, hold on, which... Who is who? Shit. Anyways, uh, I think Sipa's on... I didn't... I forgot to check. I forgot to check who's, uh, who's playing what. Let me just, uh, wait a second, and then we can, uh, check the sides of the battle. <laughs> Mr. Toyful, oh, you DM'd me? Uh, just DM me the replay afterwards. Um, yeah, I'm already joining another lobby, so currently I'm in a bit, I'm a bit busy now, Mr. Toyful. But yeah, oh, one more thing. Jaima has his own YouTube channel, so do check out his content. Um, I think it's in Italian, so I can't I can't really say anything about my uh about the content myself. But yeah, definitely if you understand language if you speak italian do check it out we did we do need more uh caster for the community uh also in various languages as well but anyways now for the army build here on sipa's side as the chaos dwarf we have a line of chaos dwarf warriors mixed in with goblin laborers and whatnot and then um we also have some orc laborers some hobgoblin wolf raiders with bows on both sides for that skirmishing fire power, the demon's tongue regiment of renown demon and iron demon, and then they're supported by some bull center renders with great weapons for their anti large armor piercing, leading the army sorcerer prophet of fire. There, oh, the chaos dwarves are going for a super duper wide line, probably just trying to overwhelm the empire box, which we are seeing some here. Swordsmen in front, on the uh, flanks there are some spears, a second line of halberdiers and then further back more spears to protect the rear and flank and acts as tactical reserve. Further back there we have the Demogriff Knights, two of them with halberds, probably trying to fight an anti-large cavalry battle against the uh, bull and Renders, but they are not going to trade efficiently because their armor that you pay so much for, well, it's going to be wasted against the anti-large armor piercing of the bull and Renders. Oh, actually, I need to check my uh, device. Oh, it, it's burning. It's getting toasty. Um, anyways, the Sunmaker Hellstorm rocket battery to annihilate any Chaos Dwarf infantry formation. Outriders with grenade launchers as well to deal with enemy infantry, which there's a lot here today. And then, leading the army, we have Marcus Wolfheart, supported by a mage of death, Amethyst Wizard. Spirit Leech and Fate of Buna, of course, but... That w might just get contracted by uh, the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire's healing, the Shadows of Blood and Darkness. Ooh, this is gonna be a nasty healing. That can uh, counteract the Spirit Leash quite well. Anyways, Sunmaker will start opening up at the Chaos Dwarf Formation, but because the Chaos Dwarves are getting such a thin line, the spread of the Sunmaker doesn't actually do much damage to its formations. Usually, the um, Sunmaker maximizes damage if the formation of an army is a bit more blocky because the spread is more of a vertical spread than a horizontal spread. So the shots either land over their target or they're landing short. And um, yeah, so it would actually do collateral damage to targets in front of the intended target and behind the intended target. Oh, I forgot the silver bullets are in the middle, just ready to shoot up some bigger targets. A burning head, very nice here, a curving into the retreating swordsman. Oh, it did some noticeable damage to the halberdiers, but it annihilated the swordsman down to half health. But very nice combo from the hunter's snares of Marcus, plus the silver bullets uh, unloading on to the sorcerer prophet of fire. However, the shadows of blood and darkness will mitigate a lot of the damage in the later stages of the game. Anyway, Demon's Tongue getting shot by Marcus and returning fire with literal fire, though it did take quite a bit of damage from the Silver Bullets Overwatch fire. The front line though, Goblin Neighbors are taking casualties, Chaos Dwarf Warriors are also suffering on the approach due to all that Sunmaker firepower, but once they start approaching into the Empire formations, the Sunmaker might just end up with a lot of uh, friendly fire. At the back there, Demogriff Knights are pushing back the Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders, while at the same time, oh no, Bull Center Enders with 
uh, great weapons are coming in, and they are gonna annihilate the Demogriff Knights. However, the Saucer Prophet of Fire is pinned down by the Demogriffs, plus Marcus is around, so they are suffering quite badly at the hands of... Oh, nope, he's not actually taking much damage, because the Demogriffs are too busy chasing after the target instead of actually hitting it. Now that he's pinned down, he's taking more casualties. The Empire Front Knight is faltering under the might of Chaos Dwarf Warriors, and I assume a little bit of a burning head here or there, or or maybe even Sunmaker friendly fire, but right now the Empire box has been broken up as the Iron Demon is crushing their infantry and the uh, Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders are just disrupting all the missile units. The Silver Bullets are standing. They're not routing just yet, but here comes the Orc Laborers and Chaos Dwarf Warriors to deal with them. Also, the Demogriff Knights who are surrounding the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire actually got routed by some more bull center renders with great weapons. As I said there, the Emigrave Halberts just can't really trade well against the bull center renders, and this is what happens. The Emigraves should really be on the train, yes indeed they should be, but they also have too many threats to deal with. They're such an expensive cavalry, you can't really bring that many of them, and uh, even if you brought them, yeah, they, they just don't trade well into most things due to their lack of numbers. And uh, yeah, they unfortunately just don't trade well into uh, the bull center enders and are pushed off. Those silver bullets are still desperately trying to fire, but alas, alas, they are just not doing too much damage to the bull center enders. Just not doing enough burst damage, and the demographic ha halberds are running for their lives as the bull center enders are ha do have their eyes on the prize. On the far side, there. Saucer Prophet of Death is getting hit by a Spirit Leech, but the Shadows of Blood and Darkness is healing that direct damage back up. Grenade Launchers finally activated. I think they are kind of forgotten in the forest. Now they are trying to wipe out some of these Chaos Dwarf infantry, but they still have some Bull Center Enders to deal with, which the Empire doesn't really have a good answer for. And I don't think the Empire has any chances remaining for this battle. As the Burning Hat clear out even more of their anti-large support, these Halberdiers are pretty much the last hope for the Empire to hand though the Bull Center Enders, but alas, that is not gonna happen as they are running for their lives. The Demogriffs once again taken out by the Bull Center Enders. One last net from Marcus Wolfheart, pinning down everything in the vicinity, but that is not gonna matter too much since there is nothing to follow up with an attack to wipe out the Saucer Prophet of Fire. Marcus Wolfheart is still being bullied by the Demon's Tongue. The Demon's Tongue doesn't really need to actually fight him or do any damage to him. He just needs to make sure Marcus Wolfheart doesn't get to shoot just to keep the just to keep the Sorcerer Prophet alive, which is exactly what the Demon's Tongue doing. They're knocking Marcus around while the Sorcerer Prophet of Fire is still barely alive. He's he, he is alive, just not a lot of HP left and um, just kind of hanging on. Another shot from Marcus though, he did get a little bit of breathing room to just put in another shot onto the Saucer Prophet of Fire. Maybe it is a good idea to drop a Spirit Leech right now? Alas, the aim of his wizard seems to have another idea to do something else. But either ways, I don't think that's gonna matter too much here. As the rest of the um, Empire Army is pretty much in shambles and the Marcus Wolfheart will get bullied to death by the Demon's Tongue. He just needs to put in an another shot onto the Saucer Prophet of Fire though. Like, just at least get something out of this defeat, but, uh, I- Oh! Oh! It seems that the Saucer Prophet of Fire has returned. Uh, it has rallied with uh, barely any leadership, but it is still positive leadership. How about here? It's pushing off the Orc Laborers. And Marcus Wolfhart still not putting in any shots. Ooh, a wasted breath attack <laughs> blocked by the tree, which is quite ironic when you think about it. Uh, trees blocking fire and all that, but yeah, anyways, Marcus Wolfheart is bullied to death by the Iron Demon. On the far side, the Outriders are still kiting, but here comes the Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders with bows. They are more than capable of taking out these grenade launches, since their skirmishing fire can whittle down the um, skirmish cavalry from afar, and if they get caught in melee, then it's the loss of the more expensive grenade launches. But yeah, basically... Shiggity, unless the Dwarf Lord dies, I think they got this. Yep, they did. Um, uh, it's... Wait, did the Chaos Dwarf... Is the Chaos Dwarf Lord dead? And I missed it. Ah. Oh well. I don't think it died, right? Yeah, yeah, it's still barely alive. 
barely but alive. But yeah, overall Iron Demon just bullied Marcus from full health to death. He he was just on Marcus Wolf Heart throughout the mid game to the end of the game. So he did accumulate quite a bit of value and more importantly the area of effect damage it does with the flamethrower and just bulldozing through the Empire troops. Yeah, it, it got some amazing value. And uh, Bull Santa Renders trade amazing against Demogriff Knight, while Demogriffs trade horribly against the Bull Santa Renders. Their armor piercing is wasted against the Bull Santa Renders, and their armor is also wasted against the Bull Santa Renders. So, yeah, it's just not a good trade against um, this cavalry. Other than that, oof, the Wolf Raiders. This one took out the. Yeah, this one took out the Sunmaker, I assume. So the Sunmaker, despite an expensive artillery piece, didn't get much value. Silver Bullets barely earned back their cost, I think. Yeah, very barely. And uh, the Dwarf Infantry, the Chorf Infantry didn't get that much value, but that's fine. Because the Bull Center Renders and the Iron Demon carry their weight. Um, the rest of the Empire Army didn't do that much, unfortunately. I would say in this matchup, it's probably even better if you just bring a ton of Huntsmen. To shoot the bull center renders, but uh, I will. I haven't played this matchup for a while, but uh, yeah, it it's it's a rough matchup for the empire, uh, as um, uh, on my uh, previous experience and all. But yeah, that is the end of this game. Let's hop around and see if we have other games ready. Wait, is human boy? Oh, human. Ooh, human boy and pigman. Hmm. I'm tempted to see if human boy has. Okay, let's see if let's see if anyone has a uh, has a room up. Uh, none of these. TPK. The Phoenix King is waiting. I assume. Uh, 1v1, these are public lobbies. So I guess Human Boy and Pikmin are in a battle right now. Alright, let's just jump into Phoenix King's lobby and just wait a bit. Oh, actually, no, we can just look at the... Ah. Or, or we can just watch... We can just keep spectating the battles of Sipa. Uh until the end of his run, maybe. Uh, I think I'll, I'll ditch the demographs and take Huntsman. Yeah, Huntsman would probably work better in here. Uh, Geld is also better, I think. Tra Final Transmutation is good against Bull Santos and Overcast Plague of Us. Pairs well with Huntsman, maybe, but I don't know if Geld is a good choice here. Oh, shit, I forgot to close the door. Uh, let me just close my uh, room door first. Give me a second. Train is the problem, not the bull centers. Um, I have how about is for. I think I think a good better idea to deal with the tra uh, the train is more just bring an armor piercing lord which I usually would do um like what I would do usually is just bring Boris Toddbringer because he has healing in case there is a spirit leech or final transmutation from the Chaos Dwarf side um they can um Boris can heal himself up while at the same time other spells can be brought to deal with the Chaos Dwarf but uh I am not quite sure what I can do in this matchup myself either, so we shall see. But anyways, um, do we have any lobby that... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep spectating this lobby, I suppose. Because it seems that the other matchups are... Uh, yeah, the other matches are still ongoing or... Uh, Having a bit more of an, having some, yeah, they're still ongoing or already, or already started. Oh, race and the Phoenix King, they are. Hold on a second. Can I, can I find the TPK? Oh no. 
All right. Guess where? Not what? I am new. <laughs> I am new player. Please kindness. Uh. I don't think. No. What? What do you mean invalid game code? Oh shit! Right. That is join with code. Uh, spectate. There we go. Wrong. Wrong match. All right, cool. We're just gonna wait on Sipa and uh, Pathetic Enterprise, also known as Cyrus, um, to pick their armies. In the meantime, let's see who's playing against who. Aren't Empire Knights enough for that? <laughs> Oh. All right, cool. Human boy is playing against Pigman, which I have a feeling that it's going to be a bit of a sweaty match, but uh yeah. And I think they're already in uh, Yeah, they're already playing against each other, so I Sipa, oi, toy taco glitch come back. Uh. Right, I'm back and I'm just waiting for Sipa and Pathetic Enterprise, aka uh, Cyrus, to pick their armies. Two very good players. Sipa is definitely one of the stronger players in uh, re re I've seen recently. Hmm. Sipa is very good. I, I would, I would say probably better than me with how often he played for a while. Um, because I honestly I have not been playing that much lately. Uh, I stopped playing quick battles can, since it's actually quite boring if you're not playing with people that are like at least close to your level or above. Like, the reason why I like playing land battles multiplayer is because it's an even match. I can find an even match here instead of just playing against the AI, which is dumb as hell. But then if you're playing against people who are just casually playing on land battles or they're just cheesing on land battles it's either a sweaty match where they're just abusing the game mechanics or it's just not as fun so i just i stopped playing ranked multiplayer i only play in like occasionally in like tournaments and stuff when uh when i have an occasion to play a match against another player to play but uh, other than that i don't really play that much these days instead i've been Spending a lot more time on other stuff, especially now that like there's a There's a very quiet lull in content, right? Uh, there's not much updates coming Honestly, just not much exciting content out recently other than the couple fixes or additions to the DLC. So um, Yeah, I think me and a lot of other players are also just kind of hibernating I do realize, I do notice that there's a lot more players playing the Vermin League though, which is a very good thing. And I, I really appreciate Human Boy just keeping the multiplayer scene, uh, it's the competitive multiplayer scene alive. <laughs> oh boy. Honestly, I can't imagine what would happen if there's no, if Human Boy isn't just regularly um, hosting land battles and having a, a kind of letter. A ranked letter for players to play around and uh, just join together. Like the otherwise, if if it's just like occasional tournaments, like uh, stuff that I host, it's it it's not gonna keep people engaged as yeah. It, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be as helpful to keep people engaged in the multiplayer scene. Honestly, Sipa sucks. <laughs> Let's see if I have a better micro than me. How? Human boy, where are the watchers on the wall? We pretty much are. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a bit. I mean, I'm I'm just kind of chilling right now and waiting for the films of Decay to drop. Otherwise, I'm just like playing other games. Like um, recently, I've just got a bit more spare time to myself, um, thanks to my new job actually. And I can just focus on uh, enjoying other other hobbies of mine. Like I've been watching a lot more anime lately, uh, catching up on shows that I missed out on over the past year or so. 
Um, but yeah, watching a lot of anime. Free Run is good. Free Run, um, but I, I don't suppose that mo most people here watch anime, so I'm just not gonna delve too. What did I watch? Uh, Free Run. Free Run is uh, definitely something I recommend. And Dangers in My Heart. Two very good shows. I've read their mangas as well, so. Um, like, I know the story, and I know they're a very good story, and yeah, I've been enjoying the animes a lot. I'm terrified of how strong Empire will become uh, after Thrones, Thrones of Decay. Huh. We shall see what Empire and the Dwarves will uh, receive. Maybe they'll even receive faction mechanics, unlike the... Yeah, unlike... Yeah, maybe I just hope the Empire and Dwarfs received, um, yeah, received the factions mechanics honestly, because it is pretty much only the, um, yeah, yeah, it's only. Wait, even green skins got got faction mechanics. Um, I mean the undead technically have the not, not routing faction mechanic, but uh, but I guess fa uh, Vampire Coast doesn't have faction mechanic, but overall like. Most factions have their own unique faction mechanic kind of thing, right? Uh, but um, Empire doesn't... Dwarfs doesn't have their faction mechanic. Like, if they have their faction mechanic, that would be amazing. It would be... Re mechanics? Countryside? What is it? I don't understand. Um, Like, Empire... The faction mechanic... Like, uh, let me think. So... Factions that got introduced in game two, like uh, say high elves, ha lizardmen, and all, they have their own faction mechanic, right? High elves has their martial prowess, martial mastery, their like passive ability that gives them extra stats and whatnot. The dark elves have their murderous prowess, which is something, which is like a wa that doesn't activate automatically, uh, that doesn't activate manually. Um, like, green skins have their wa, so that's their, like, kind of faction mechanic, right? For the Tomb Kings, it's their uh, Realm of Souls ability, the the heals and whatnot. Um, yeah, certain races don't have that race passives or army abilities. Like, the Chaos, the f four Chaos Gods have their, like, active abilities. And then for, for Lizardmen, they have their Primal Fighter. Primal Fighter and their predatory senses, predatory instincts. So that's like their kind of like a a an ability unique to their kind of faction as a whole kind of thing, right? Like Empire and Dwarf, it would be really interesting if Empire and Dwarves received those kind of similar faction abilities or uh, uh, passive attributes. But I don't know. Like... Oh, fuck, even Norska has their own faction mechanic, Berserk. Like, even Norska has their own faction mechanic. It's like, Empire doesn't, uh, Vampire Counts kind of has it, kind of doesn't. Tequila Sense that they don't need it, uh, but it would be nice to have them, you know, for the thematic purposes. In Italian countryside and campaign is the same word. Interesting. I did not know that every day you learn something new. Uh... But there could be some interesting stuff they could do with nightly orders. That definitely would be interesting. Like if they, if they allow Empire Knights to have different passives, according to their nightly orders, that would be really interesting. Shigeriki, um, Kusuriya no hito, Kusuriya no hitori goto, Kusuriya no hitori goto, and Undead Unluck. Oh, Undead Unluck is, I love the uh, the story. Um. The first season is probably not going to be good because the first it, it started like a fan surfacey kind of thing, but then after I was reading it and then I went through like maybe like a few dozen, maybe even like a hundred plus chapters, and then I got to one point and suddenly it hit me, it clicked, and I was like, "Oh shit, the story is really good!" And then I'm just reading it religiously, and not religiously, but I'm I definitely became a fan of the story for Undead Unluck. I don't know about Kusuriya no Hitori Goto, though, because, like, or, uh, what is it? Uh, the Apothecary? Uh, ap apothecary Di- Apothecary? Apothecary Diaries? Yeah. Yeah, Apothecary Diaries? Uh, a friend of mine watches it, and 
she really loved like she she's a big fan of the show and has been recommending it to some of our friends but uh i haven't started watching it i i know i know it's a story of feels and whatnot but uh i will uh I will eventually get to it. I'm also watching like Shangri La Frontier and a bunch of other stuff. So there's a there's a bunch of anime I'm just kind of watching in the background. But yeah, anyways, uh, Taki Lesson said if they bring Knights of the White Wolf, the Ulrich worshippers, or they make Knights of more and more interesting, I feel like what they can do is just add knightly orders to Empire and allow people to select different versions of Empire Knights according to the Knightly Orders. Just like how they have different versions of Chaos units according to the Four Gods, right? But then now we have Knightly Orders in terms of different factions. Yeah, like Mark of Chaos, yeah, basically. Anyways, um, let us just go into the battle and check out the army builds. For the Beastmen led by Sipa, we have a line of Angor herds in the front line, flanked by some Angor spears, and at the back, a ton of Sandigals of Tinge. That's Beastman. Oh, Beastman. Wait, hold on. That's, uh, okay, that's for... Did he win, like, 10 Senegors? Okay, 4 Senegors with throwing axes, which is a different version compared to the melee Senegors, which, uh, we have 3... Three Senegals, melee Senegals on each side. Uh, two of them on each side are Senegals of Tinji, and then there's one, like, regular Senegals. Uh, oh wait, hold, hold on. This is a Sons of Goros plus uh, another Sandigals of Tinge and then this regular Sandigals. The Sons of Goros does have an interesting... Uh, wait, hold on. Wait, they have Guardian. What's the difference? Oh, they only have Guardian as like a special thing? And magic attacks? So I guess there's that, but they're fighting against Lizardmen, which means they don't actually need that much magic damage, since Lizardmen are not known for their physical resistance. In the front line for um, Pathetic Enterprise, aka Cyrus, we have some skin skirmishers in the front line, then a line of infantry, we have uh, Soros Warriors, some of them with spears, one of them without, and then a line of skin cores with Javis at the back. Further back, some core ones to provide a little bit of armored Mobility, which I don't think would matter against the Senegals with great weapons. Uh, Umbro Tide and um, a bit of heal Arc of Soltech to drain down the enemy infantry. Slam Age Priest of Metal and uh, in the skies, Colossus on Hunters for the anti large fighting power. I feel like this this Lizardman build would struggle. Oh, well, well, right, we also have the Sacred Boxagors um, ready up with their magical power fists. And, anyways, in the front line. Soros will win against the uh, Angors, no issues at all. They do, they might take a bit more damage for the Spears one since they has have a little bit less uh, melee stats. But yeah, overall, the melee fights will favor the child of the old ones, but uh, I don't know about the mobility though. That's a lot of Sentinels like rushing into the back line, piling onto the skin cords with javelins just whoa. The impact damage is enough to ruin them, and the Koans are not cut out to hold back these Senegals with their AP. One of them don't have AP, but uh, they're getting on top of the Umbral Tide to disrupt them. The Colossal Non Hunters are diving down with their anti lodge They can fight through these um, Senegals pretty efficiently, but I'm not sure uh, how they would perform once they get charged. At the back here, we have um, the Bastilodon Arc of Soltech holding down all these beastmen troops alongside some skinks. While the Soros are winning their fight, respect to fight against the beastmen infantry, but it will take them some time before they can come back and help out, bail out their missiles. The Umbral Tide has not been firing much and are doing very limited work against the enemy. Traitor Kin is coming in from, of course, the Traitor Kin caster. It is a great great shaman of wild leading the army with only Traitor Kin and the rod of the forbidden rod. Um, but yeah, Trader again doing some really good damage against Umbro Tide and the Colossal on the Hunters. And uh, there's a man already down on the balance of power. All these mobility swarming the um, Lizardman backline is really putting the pressure pressure into their missile troops. The Court of Porto is desperately trying to hold the line there, but there's just too much armor piercing mobility overwhelming them in terms of sheer numbers. And the lack of healing means that they can't actually mitigate the losses with any HP recovery. So things are looking worse 
and worse for the Lizardmen. Especially, routed troops cannot be recovered once the Santa Goals and Frank Axis starts chasing them down. There's just so much mobility for the Beastmen on this field. They, yeah, the Lizardmen. Yeah, there's so much mobility for the Beastmen on the field. Lizardmen simply can't deal with them all um, with their rather narrow army. And as a result, the Lizardmen monsters are taking more and more damage. Throwing axes are approaching and will be dropping arm piercing missiles onto the Court of Portal. They do have physical resistance, a bit, and, uh, and missile resistance to mitigate it, but that unfortunately is not going to be enough, even with the primal instincts giving them that status buff. Um, since simply they just don't have the healing to mitigate all the AP that is going to come in. Javelins are around though, and they are doing some noticeable damage to some of these Sandigors, but they only have so many Javelins and there are so many Sandigors. Um, and they, some of these Sandigors can even just charge in and just disrupt them from throwing. Like, this one Sandigor went down to half HP, sure, but... Oof, this is honestly pretty bad. Final Transmutation is not gonna... Oh, the, the Metal Slot only has Final Transmutation? Yeah, this is not gonna help. Uh, as the Lizardmen uh, are fighting in a very concentrated formation while the Beastman has a really spread out army. And the value of the um, of the Beastman army is just spread all over the right, all over the place. Yes, the final transmutation can hit the Great Bray Shaman of Wild and killed him, but that is way too late. As the Sandigors are now pretty much taking dominance on the battlefield. The Soros of Spears are still fighting, but the Court of Portal is gone. Yeah, it's gone. I, I don't see them anymore. Wait, are they still holding or are they gone? Yeah, they're gone. The Court of Portal is gone. Um, the Ark of Soltak is down. It's dead right here. Um, I think I think that yeah, the throwing axes probably took it out, and uh, yeah, that 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 is it. That shall be it. Being BM taking now my no minos and still winning. You don't see that every day. I it might just because the AP on these Sandigors are doing some pretty good work. Sons of Goros, 1,300 gold worth of damage value, doing some really solid job here. And um, the AP missiles of the Sandigors wearing axes doing some solid work as well, since the Lizardmen actually don't have anything to counteract these skirmish cavalry. Um, and um, the rest of the Beastman army didn't do that much. Traitorkin did a lot of good damage though, because because of the Lizardmen formation being so concentrated, and uh, they took a lot of damage. Still, the Slime Age Priest of Metal did some good damage with the final transmutation, just not enough to carry the game. I suppose one of the mistakes here is that they brought the Umbro Tide. Well, it is very good at taking down specific monsters and specific targets. They, they, they are an expensive unit after all, and that led to partially led to the narrower army of the Lizardmen. Yeah, and the Lizardmen just don't have enough units to deal with the threats of so many Sandigors. The, um, yeah, not even the Saurus managed to earn back their value. And uh, the Koan most certainly did not because their armor are basically ignored by all those AP mobility. And the Skink Skirmisher is one of them. Uh, yeah, they didn't do much either. Javelin's one of them did fine. Two of them did fine. This one actually did really well. Just uh, not enough to carry the game either. But yeah. I don't know if a Metal Mage in this matchup is actually anything decent. I don't think so, actually. Like, a Metal Mage... Searing Doom's AP is kind of wasted on, on the Beastmen. I feel like it's just better if you just bring a Live Mage and bring some solid monsters to deal with the Liz uh, deal with the Beastmen. Almost feel like. But yeah, anyways, that is it for this battle. Oh, Persian Warrior has to forfeit the tournament since it's getting late. So, oh well, we will move on to... Oh, so it's, it is going to be Olaf and Mr. Teufel, one of them, versus Human Boy. Well, I am waiting. Oh, I'm getting a lot of replays. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. 
Olaf and Mr. Toyful are still fighting. And Raced and Sipa will be the next match. And I hope I'm not burning down my CPU. Um, because this game is indeed quite, uh, quite resource intensive for a CPU, and I did not. Uh, yeah, my my CPU doesn't have the greatest uh, greatest heat dispersal. Anyways, uh, let me just turn on. Let me just check this. Okay. Hmm. Might have to turn down some of the settings while we're at it. Hmm. I think we don't have to do trees that well. Alright, cool. We're back. All right, let's see who's ready for. Yeah, let's see who is. Uh... Ooh, what we can do actually is ch start checking out the replays since. Um... Or I can just check out Sipa. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can just try to find Sipa and race. Um... Lobby. Yeah, I can just do that and just keep watching. Huh, okay. All right. Let me just ask Sipa and race to set up a spectator slot, I suppose. All right, let's see. Can I? Can we get the lobby of Sipa and race, and then we then we can keep watching. Which I kind of find it amusing right now, because we are actually... We're, this stream is basically turning into Sipa's adventure on Friday Night Fights. Bro! Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh! Um, I was asking the name of Lobby of Race and Sipa. Oh shit, I forgot. Um Now Race told me it it is uh it is the only one with spec spec slot. So I was like looking for it. And then Sipa sent in a message with five dots. I thought he was just like disappointed about um yeah. Oh, three dots. Three dots. Three dots. Uh but yeah. I was like, "Oh, Sipa, are you are you trying to do the speechless Reaction or something, and then I realized, ah, shit, is actually the one with three, four dots, four dots. But yeah, god damn it, why do you have to set up such an inconspicuous, um, inconspicuous lobby name? Anyways, uh, we shall wait for Sipa and Race to go through their army picks while we wait. Yeah, I noticed that as well, seems to be even be soaking heaps of CPU in the menus for some reason. Yeah, they I feel like like Warhammer 2 doesn't drain my doesn't tax my system as much, I feel like. Like Warhammer 3 probably gave my system like a good 5 degree to 10 degree increase in terms of temperature, which I don't appreciate, but Allah's what well, I what can I do? Hey Crown Metal, nice to see you here. Um, hmm. 
You want to you want to shame Sipa into for saying your nicks and not picking Grimgore. You didn't even pick green skins. My God. The shame. He didn't have screen skin in his pick. Now that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> now, if Sipa picks green skins, then we can forgive him for saying the Grimgore line. But if, if he doesn't, then yeah, he fucked. He's fucked. Figures that I had to fight against the protagonist of the tournament at first round. Wait, who are you, Shiggy Diggy? Let me check. Oh, are, you're boring. You're okay. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> Ah, oh, he went to BM, so I made him pick BM. Uh, he figures out how to fight against the protagonist of the tournament at the first round. <laughs> uh, Sipa is indeed the protagonist now. He he has maybe. Let's see if his plot armor can win against race, or if he, or if his, uh, or if his uh, plot armor fails on this one. But it seems like it is a Chaos Dwarf versus High Elf battle, and we shall see what happens here. And uh, yeah. We shall wait for Sipa to get ready. Um, I'm gonna hydrate myself a bit. Oh shit, I might actually make some tea after this battle. I need some hot water, hot, yeah, hot water or a uh, hot drink to soothe my uh, voice a bit. But yeah, Sipa seems to be having some troubles picking his build, so we're just gonna wait a bit longer. In the meantime, let me just uh, spread some propaganda for Super Earth, because uh, we need more reinforcements on, of course, Hell Divers. Oh shit, I need to finish my daily mission for the medals. Yeah, another thing that I've been working on, uh, like I've been doing a lot these days, is just playing Hell Divers. It's a super fun game after all. Like, it, it has its bugs and whatnot, but the la the state of launch of the game is way better than Total Warhammer 3, honestly. <laughs> uh, at least, like, at least people are having fun in the game. It doesn't have as much performance issues. Yes, the game kind of crashes occasionally, but eh, they, it's fine. It's, 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 it's bearable. And the game it's, itself is fun with, like, very very flesh out content which and they are adding more in the future so yeah that's that's something i've been doing quite a bit actually bujalish is another um content creator of total warhammer i think he's on a break recently so he he doesn't really do any uh streams or whatnot but he he used to stream some on kick so there's that but uh yeah we were just playing occasionally when uh just so happens both of us are online and whatnot but uh yeah super fun i i recommend I recommend the Titanic had a better launch than Warhammer 3 the Titanic actually sailed out of the port without any issue the problem is they crashed in the middle so on in terms of launch Titanic was fine it was working absolutely fine except it has some slight issues of not enough lifeboats <laughs> but yeah I guess at least the um, Warhammer 3 has a bit more chances to fix things and i hope they're going like at least you you're seeing you're see we well, are seeing ca like patching the game a lot more frequently and uh just putting in a bit more effort on balancing as well I really appreciate the regrowth removed from kairos and um yeah they, they're just a bit more responsive on issues now so that is something i really appreciate but uh, we shall see what happens i honestly don't know and honestly, I don't even know if I'm ever gonna get, like, free Steam codes uh, for the DLCs anymore. Because, um, the content create... Like, that's that's one problem I'm, like, a dilemma I'm facing with. It's like, oh, they're, they're, they've they cancelled the creator program. So I, I don't know whether I'll be accepted to the next creator program if, uh... Uh... If they ever have one. So, yeah, we shall see. Like if they don't, then I'm like I'm just kind of bumped up because like I've worked, I've worked my channel up to the point that I can get accepted to the creator program and like get those early access content. 
to show everyone but then if I if I don't get it anymore then I'm like ah I have to work for it again which is kind of sucks but we shall see what happens we ne you never know um but yeah anyways enough ranting let's go into the army belt for the chaos dwarves led by Sipa he's going for chaos dwarves again he seems to be taking quite a bit of liking for this faction. A front line of Chaos Dwarf Warriors mixed in with Goblin Labors and Hobgoblin Cutthroats. And then on the far flank there's a couple Wolf Raider with bows and uh, Hashut Stock Ravagers. In front of them a Daemon's Tongue for that flaming damage but... Ooh, ooh no Dragon Princes. I thought there would be Dragon Princes to deal with the uh, fire damage but I guess it's not the case. Anyways. Demon Smith Saucer of Death and the Saucer Prophet of Fire. Double Spell Caster, interesting. And uh, Spirit Leech, Reforge for healing the um, Iron Demon, and also Burning Head to clear out lines of infantry, which the High Elves did bring quite a few here. A Spear, a Staunch line of Spear, very typical. A second line of Staunch line of Spears, less Staunch, but they do have Archer Fire as a bit of a mitigate, like a compensation. And then we have we have uh, more archers actually, Sisters of Avalon, elite archers at the back there, the Storm Raiders, which I honestly don't understand why you would pick these guys. I they have charge reflection, they have fear. They can cause fear, but that's about it. That's all they do, and more stats. So I don't know. I don't think these guys are worth it. I honestly don't think these guys are worth it, but I guess they do have better melee stats than your typical Loven C god. Yeah, like 9 more stats, but yeah, I honestly don't think they're worth it. Eagle Club Ultverve to put on some range pressure against the against the Demon Stung, which and and they're putting in some good hurt. So the Demon Stung need to get into melee range ASAP and start doing damage, but of course if they get close, there will be a lot of Archer Fire shooting it down. Anyways, in the skies there, the Saucer Prophet of Fire is taking some shots in the face. They are diving down to disrupt the um, Loven Sea Guard, a burning head there. A deadly one too. Roasting a ton of these sisters. Unfortunately though, they don't actually finish off models, so the sisters will stand still holding firm for now. The leader of the army is an Archmage of Shadow, so we can expect some mystifying miasma to drain down the Hobgoblin. Uh, wolf Raiders with bows and they are slowed down too so the Illyrian Reavers are able to catch up to them and start dragging them down in melee combat. The problem is that this flank is getting collapsed pretty hard with three single entities piling onto them. Illyrian, Reaver, uh, Illyrian Reavers manage to push off one of the Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders while the other one the Ogalak Hans Wolf Boys are circling around. They are gonna get shot by the Sisters of Avalon so things are not looking too uh, comfortable for them but these reavers, oh, these reavers, really nice micro from race there, just pulling them away from the three single entities, four sing, three single entities. And at the same time, the rest of the high elf formation is able to stand firm and start dish out damage. However, Hashutstock Ravagers are moving over. Um, and, and second unit of the Wolf Raiders, the Ogalakans Wolf Boys, are getting pressured by a combination of Mouth Coughs and Illyrian Reavers, while the Sisters of Avalon and Love and Seagull are getting compromised by a ton of these very expensive um, yeah, Chaos Dwarf entities. Chaos Dwarf Warriors are pushing the High Elf backline, and the Sisters of Avalon, these, guys, these, um, yeah, these girls are getting shut down for now. A little bit of a Vortex, oh, Pit of Shades is here. Yeah, they have Pit of Shades. Pinning down the Chaos Dwarf Warriors, really nice. Um, cast over there, doing a lot of damage to the Chaos Dwarf Warriors. Probably an overcast as well. And this <laughs> entire unit got annihilated. Oh god. Now the Sisters continues to fire here, but they might just take each a ton of damage from the Burning Hand. Really nice cast. Actually curving into a Loven Seagard unit as well, roasting some of these High Elf Archers, but... And overall, the right flank of the High Elves has been entirely collapsed, and they're struggling to hold back all these... Yeah, this flank overload. The Eagle Club Bolt Floor is also knocked offline. Loven Seagard are fighting in melee, getting dragged down, very unfortunate. Oh god, that's a lot of damage from a charge of the... Um, blazing Bull. Yeah. An Iron Demon also ran in to the um, Loven Seagard behind them, and the sisters will get terrified away. There are some Illyrian Reavers that are desperately needed, desperately needed to counteract 
the enemy mobility, the enemy monster threat, at least use their mass to pin down the Hashistar Ravagers, which they're gonna do it now, but the rest of the missiles are pretty much done for. Yeah, oh god, this is bad. Both of the sisters of Avalon are really weak right now. And the Larian Reavers that are sacrificing themselves to hold the line are getting absolutely roasted by two breath attacks from the from the two brazen from the two uh, fire cows. I forgot the actual the Taurus. Shit, I forgot the name of these bra brazen bull. No, these are not brazen. Ah, I forgot the name of the monsters. Ooh, this is bad. <laughs> this is bad. Uh, anyways, um, Archmage of Shadows dive down onto the Iron Demon, onto the Demon's Tongue, but um, this is a desperate attempt, of course, because the damage dealers of the High Elves are no longer active. Only some very tattered sisters of Avalon are still around. A Bull Torox, Bull Torox. Why are there two Toroxes? I mean, to be fair, there are multiple Wanderers in the game as well, so that doesn't help. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, the Bull Torox. The Bale Torox, Bale Torox. Wait, no. Bale Torox, Lamasu, and. Uh... Torox just means cow, I know, but like there's also Torox the Brass Bull. So, like, there. Like, we have multiple Fireborns in this game, okay? High Elves has Fireborns, Chaos Dwarves have Fireborns. Yes. There are multiple Fireborns in this game, so it doesn't. They really need to find more words. If anything, but anyways, the oh, <laughs> look at the flaming attack actually arching over, trying to hit the um, archmage, just not hitting anything. It dissipates in the end. So yeah. Anyways, the um, demon's tongue just slams straight into the back of the sovereign guard, and the sovereign guards are taking quite a bit of damage, not only from the demon's tongue, but also from the friendly fire of the pit of shades. Another flamethrower into the Loven sea god, and it might actually just it might actually just rout them. Once the Iron Demon charges in, the Demon's Tongue with the burnt effect and the terror on the machine can just run over these guys, terrify them, and that's gonna be it for this Loven Sea God. Spirit Leash continues to pressure the Archmage of Shadows, and um, Archmage of Shadows just doesn't dare to dive down. Army Loss is hit, and uh, that shall be game. The Great Taurus and Bale Taurus. Ah, right, right. Not Taurox, it's Taurus. Right. I haven't fled. Look, I have. Uh, this is embarrassing, but I haven't played uh, Chaos Dwarfs in a very long while, so so yeah, I I, I occasionally forgot names of uh, some of the units, not only for um, Chaos Dwarfs but also for other rosters, I suppose. But anyways, the um, the build, the great Tauruses. Uh, anyways, the Tauruses are. Uh, Got some pretty good damage done, especially the breath attacks. Sipa's breath attacks were on point, and uh, Hush's Raf Dark Ravagers. All all these like all these heavy monsters, not exactly heavy in terms of armor, but like definitely heavy mass, just plows through the spear box, and the High Elves simply don't have enough mass to stop them. With only Alarian Reavers, they were not able to pin down the enemy monsters, monstrosities. And they just ran o straight over the Lothian Sea and Sisters of Avalon. Very unfortunate for the High Elves. And uh, even if they won the mobility fight, they just can't handle all these uh, monsters, honestly. And the archers were mostly just shut down. Lothian Sea God did very minimal damage. Sisters of Avalon, one of them did fine, the other not so much. Um, and the um, Storm Riders didn't earn back their value either. Spear, the staunch line of Spear actually isn't that staunch in this game. So a uh, very unfortunate for race, but that will be the end of his run. Yes, we are covering most of Sipa's run live in the stream today. It's, God, we just have a tournament protagonist now. God damn it. Great is the cheap one, Bale is the expensive one. Uh, I play them. I played them today and got both names of the bull dragon wrong. <laughs> uh, well, technically, yeah, it is basically the bull dragon, actually, when you think about it. Ah, interesting. Great cow and bale cow doesn't quite have the same ring to them. Makes it so much more different, right?
Uh, let's see if human boy is still... It seems that, huh, human boy is, and Olaf are waiting with their lobby. I don't see their lobby. Call of the moose, call of the moose. Okay, uh, we can go into spectate, but first of all, let me just up that screen blocker. Alright, we're waiting. It's Skaven versus Lizardman, a grudge match for sure. Spicy. Human boy, yes, yes, going Skaven. Olaf, the moose, going for Lizardman. Neat. Alright, let's say it does some high level Skaven play. Um, versus. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Yeah, let's see some high level Skaven play and uh, versus the one of the kings of the current patch, the Lizard Boys. I'm sure Human Boy will enlighten us about the strong stage of the Skaven faction afterwards. Yep, Skaven definitely OP right now, especially with Poison Win Globadiers. Uh. How do I put the slash sarcasm <laughs> when I'm talking? I, I, I can't do, like, I can't do sarcasm that well, like, across the screen. Excited to see Hubbard, Hubbard's rocking Skaven. It's always a treat to see Human Boy playing Skaven. Like, I, I don't think Skaven is that popular of a faction, like, you see them here or there, but, like, I don't see anyone really dedicate themselves to Skaven. Unlike sort of, like, like, High Elves are, you, like, I feel like there are certain factions with players dedicating themselves to them. Like, for High Elves, you have Ryder of Rohan and, um, Black Knight. And, uh, for Dwarves, you have Gotrek Starbreaker. Uh, do we have anyone else for factions? I don't think we have... Huh. Yeah, I don't think we have other players to, who dedicate themselves to certain factions, but, um... Uh, even I don't do that, because, like, I just play whatever is that... Uh, not exactly meta, except for one time at the beginning of the game, I was very obsessed with playing Ogre Kingdoms, but... Now I just stopped playing them for a bit now. Um... Oh, yeah, the... But, yeah, like, I don't... A lot of players like me don't don't exactly dedicate themselves to a faction, right? But like certain players, like Human Boy here, they do. Like they, of course, they still play certain factions, right? But like they still play other factions. But like there are certain people you can trust with their uh, mastery to one faction. To be fair, Black Knight is more like mastery to one build <laughs> uh, in terms of high elves. But yeah, like. I also want to find like a faction that I want to main, but uh, so far I have not done so just yet. It's more like sometimes I just play meme builds and stuff, so I just switch factions quite a lot. All the time. Say <laughs> goes, I see I'm on time to watch some OP faction. Indeed, the most OP of factions here. Skavens versus the... Um, like, this, these are the best two... Guys, these are the best two factions of the current Master now. Skaven versus the newly buffed Lizard Boys. Who who do you think would win? The the king of all patches since the very beginning of game two, the Skavens? Or the newly emerged, um, newly buffed Lizard Boys? We shall see. 
Gavin Strong, easy win. Yeah, like I, this is not a fair fight, guys. Not a fair fight. I play anything that isn't one of the weak demons, demons of chaos, Dawi, and uh, Grand Cafe. Isn't one of the weak de demons. <laughs> What do you mean isn't one of the weak demons? Is there anything, is there such thing as strong demons? Even Tinge isn't that strong, it's not, even with the new toys and all. Like if you discount Kairos and his regrowth. <laughs> they had to buff this last patch, yeah, um, Lizardman, so they have a chance versus Skaven, yeah, yeah. Lizardman was in a sad state. Oh, also I, wait, have they fixed? Have they fixed the aura of the spirit of of the quartals? Have they fixed the sacred sanctuary, sacred places, the master of sacred places? Have they fixed it? Nah. Oh no. Olaf. No. Stock still doesn't work for quartals. Oh no. Oh no. Oh shit. Knocked on my mic. Spent so much on the quartals. It doesn't matter. It doesn't even matter. Ah. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Uh, good thing is that. Okay, I forgot to. Oh, wait. Nope. 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 Anyways, army builds. Front line of Skink Javelins. Second line of Croxagores. And then Ten Huen leading the army on a Ripper Dactyl. Interesting. And then. On the other. Wait. Have we ever seen Ten Huen on a Ripper Dactyl mount? I don't think I've ever seen one in multiplayer. Anyways, for the army, Skaven Slaves, uh, yeah, Ten of Wind coming in Flock of Doom. For the Skavens, a front line of Skaven Slave Spears and Skaven Slaves. And then a second line of Poison Wind Globadiers, third line of Red Ogres, and a fourth line of uh, tons of mobility. Like, both Reds with Poison, a couple Night Runners. Oh, a couple, oh, a couple Reprojectiles Vanguard deployed, ready to jump onto the back line. Anyways, um, we have some Skaven Slave Spears here, guarding the Ikik Zap Zap, and Pit Fighters of Hell Steep, uh, providing a bit more armor-piercing front line. And I'm leading the army, Packmaster supporting a Warlord, both on Brute Horror, so they can benefit from that regeneration, and also a Ruin? Warlock Engineer. Now, the Spirit of Tech Bolt dive down onto one of the Poison Wing Globe ideas, disrupting their shooting so that the front line of the Lizardman stands a bit more of a chance. And of course, the Croxagores are crushing the Skaven Slaves. Good thing is that Human Boy did spread out his army a lot, like just screening off, just deploying his Skaven Slave way ahead of the artillery, so there's still a lot of space between the. I did not catch these Vanguard deployed troops here, but Chameleon Stalkers are sneaking in. But anyways, the front line of the Skavens are deployed way ahead, so there's still a lot more space for them to just send in reserves or regroup their forces and deal with the pushing Lizardmen. Though there are some... that does leave the back line rather unprotected. There are some Chameleon Stalkers sneaking in, which the Skavens do not have eyes on, and the Wolf Rats are shifting towards to the left flank, trying to counteract the Ripper Dectiles, but very nice uh, move from Olaf there, dragging the mobility towards the other flank so that the Chameleon Skinks can sneak in from the other side. And now the Chameleon Stalkers are jumping into melee and disrupting the Ikik Zepsa. One of the Ikik Zepsa is actually down from the explosives blow dots already. And uh, the other one went over to the Poison Wing Globe Ideas, who are now crushed by a sandwiching charge from the Croxagores and Skinks, and then Chameleon Skinks, uh, Chameleon Stalkers as well. Though the Pit Fighters of Hell Steep are beating down the Spirit of Tepok. On the far side, their Ripper Dactyles just flying around, and um, Tenhuen decided to bail himself out of that fight. Uh, dealing with two, three single entities is just not something you want to do right now. And uh, Javelins needs to just probably turn around and start shooting or something. Oh, these guys definitely need to turn around and shoot at the Pit Fighters of Hell's Deep. But it seems that they are kind of chasing the Skaven Slave Spears, which might be a mistake here. As um, the Pit Fighters are dishing out damage, Night Runners are circling around to try to get some shots onto the Ripper Jacktiles, who are now flying over and might just dive down onto them. On the back here, the Chameleon Stalkers are knocked out, but the Crossagores and Cam and the second unit of Chameleon Stalkers are also here, and they're just combining their melee might and beating down everything in their path. Chameleon Stalkers not too shabby in melee combat as well. With the Crossagores helping them out, they will crush these Skaven Slaves no problem at all, though the Geek Steps are pushing 
forward, trying to shoot at Tan Hood. It is like that one flame cannon that the human boy made a video about. The, some of the crew are back here, getting beat up, but the rest are just like... Oh no, all the crew are back here are dead. They're just pushing forward to shoot at Tan Hood. Anyways, the three single entities of the Skavens are beating down whatever resistance that the Lizardmen are trying to throw at them, while the Lizardmen is trying to dominate the fight elsewhere and maybe leave the single entities till the late game. Crossgores and Company and Stalkers have dealt with the Skaven Slave Spears, but they are still like stuck around this vicinity, not exactly disrupting the... <laughs> you know, not exactly disrupting the cannon here, but uh, they are now moving on to the Warp Lightning Cannon, so they might just get shot up. Now, if Tanawan flies over here and start like dropping onto the Poison Wing Globadiers, that would be very nice. Well, over here, the Spirit of Tepok, um jumping onto the Night Runners, who are out of ammo anyways. Regular Night Runners and uh, regular Gutter Runners don't have that much ammo, like 12 shots in total, maybe 14. I forgot the exact number, but they ha have roughly half the ammo of Slingers, so they don't actually ha they can't actually do as much damage over time. But they do have 360 shooting, so that is like a plus for them. But anyways, the rest of the Skaven army seems to be falling apart quite badly, as the Crossagores and Ripper Dark Tiles are just crushing whatever in their path. Yeah, the Skaven Slaves and Red Ogres are losing the fight, while over here, the Croxagores are pummeling the Night Runners with the help of some Chameleon Stalkers. A really nice choice of Stalkers. I I am surprised they, the Lizardman actually brought that. Um, and with the single entity disruption, the Spirit of Tepok, the Skaven shooting is just not working in this game at all. Like, the Poison Winds are dead. All that's left to carry the game are pretty much the Red Ogres and the single entities here. Very important. And uh, where is the... Wait, where... Where's the caster? Oh, it's, he's all the way over here. With Flensing Ruin. But uh, Flensing Ruin doesn't really... I guess it's all about draining down the quartal. But uh, maybe, perhaps, the Warlord and the uh, Pack Masters can uh, carry the game. Since they do have a pretty good and melee stats. And uh, they should be able to beat down the quartal no problem too online. Especially the Pack Master having... Oh, the Pack Master doesn't have any large. Okay. Okay. I thought that he has, but... Uh, I guess he does have Shock Caller to keep like boosting Clan Motor Monster attack, so there's that. And uh, the Brute Horrors here can be buffed by the Shock Caller. So, yeah. Wait, does he have anything else? Shield of... Oh, it is... Ooh! Warlord has a Shield of Distraction, so it debuffs enemy melee stats. Uh, Verminous Valor to boost leadership doesn't really matter in, in this instance. Everyone does have frenzy in the vicinity with the Brute Horror, so they won't get terror routed for now. Chocolar running with the pack does... Oh, that, that would be very important here. Running with the pack provide heals to Motor Monster, which keeps the um, Brute Horrors even more alive. They need to come back and join in the um, Red Ogres, though. Which is exactly what they're doing right now, as they are trying to pile on to the Crossagores, who are piling on to the Warlock Engineer. And um, the Warlock Engineer is taking some damage. Warlock Engineer, not Warlock. Uh, but yeah, the Warlock, Warlock Engineer is taking some damage uh, from all these armor-piercing entities. He, he does... He doesn't have much armor, but uh, the Ripper Dactyle, the Crossagores are all doing some really, really nice anti-infantry damage, but with a rear charge from the Red Ogres and uh, the Brute Horrors, they are quickly terrified and pushed off. Uh, also, don't forget about the war, uh, the Wolf Rats piling onto this blob, but a counter-attack of a Flock of Doom, draining the health of all these units in the vicinity. That doesn't really matter to the single entities though, since they do have regeneration. And also self heals with the running with the pack. So Skavens do have a commanding position now, um, despite some Ripper Tactiles are still alive on the Lizardmen side. Similarly, because the two Brute Horrors are a bit too much for the Lizardmen to deal with in late game. An interesting choice with Tan Huin and the Ripper Tactile though, but the Ripper Tactile doesn't come in quite handy this time, uh, as the Warlord and the Pack Master are beating down the. Lizardman Warlord. Oh no! Oh, this is. Oh wait, no. no. Is is that a flensing rune coming in? It should be a flensing rune coming. In. Yep, yeah, that's a flensing rune coming in. That should finish off Tan Huin no problem with the two. With the two brute horrors just pushing Tan Huin around and not actually attacking. Oh well, just Warhammer doing Warhammer things. 
But yeah, with that, Tanhuin is just gonna go down. I think he might actually... Oh, oh he's dead. One last hit from the Brood Horror. Warlock Brood, Brood Horror and Tanhuin is dead. That triggers a lot of routing from the Lizardman forces. Like, the Crossagore took a hit in their uh, morale, and once the Brood Horror jumps in with the Terror, they will just run off with the Terror. That shatters them, army losses, hits, and victory belongs to this, the OP faction, Skaven! Skaven's! Skaven's OP now! Ugh! Ugh! Hero Hammer too strong, yeah. Heal Kite is the way, unfortunately it is. Olaf had ample time to kill the castle with his Reapers, but he didn't see it. Uh The Skaven cost him of like three overcast for earning uh yeah. Yeah, I But yeah, overall, a very valiant attempt from Olaf the Moose here. I do love seeing Ten Huen with a Reaper Jactile. Unfortunately, he wasn't that useful in the game, which is why you usually only bring him on a Cold One mount. But uh, overall, really nice uh, performance for um, the Lizardmen here with the Crocs. One of the Crocs scores getting some solid value, the other not so much. But I do like a lot of these unit choices from Olaf the Moose. We have some Vanguard deployed Chameleon Stalkers, Tan Huen on a Ripper Dactile, and then two Quattles, what a chat build. Unfortunately, just not quite enough to deal with the Skaven healing, and uh, they eventually got beaten up quite badly over time, as the Skaven kind of just outgrinds them with the Brute Horrors. And yeah, Red Ogres did some really solid damage on Human Boy's side, and uh... The rest of the army, oh, Red, Wolf Rats did some really nice chasing and uh, hunting down routed units, putting some really good pressure on to the um, Lizardman army. But uh, yeah, the rest is just Skaven slaves and chaff. So yeah, not much to say about those guys. Uh, but yeah, really nice game, really nice game. Quartal was the weak link, I feel. Yeah, the Quartal was, would have been like a reasonable choice if the stalking aura works, but of course, of course, CA does... It is uh, very typically expected from CA, right? Things never work properly. Anyways, um... Let me just do this and uh, see if I can... Uh, get some... Uh, what is it called? Scoreboard. I need to uh, import some assets to the stream. So that I can set up a scoreboard. Give me a second. There we go. And then we have a uh, text. Da -da. Hmm. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, can we, uh, All right, there we go. Oh, shit, forgot. Let me just uh, get this sorted. God damn it. Um, yeah, give me a second. I mean, I need to like set up a scoreboard.
All right, cool. We just move it over to here. Uh, There we go. A very rudimentary scoreboard, but I didn't have time to fine tune it. So there is that. Uh, okay, cool. Quarto can be very disruptive in the back line, which the Quarto actually did disrupt a lot of the Poison Wing Globe ideas. So Quarto is not a not exactly a bad choice, honestly. But uh, the problem is that they don't really have a the Lizardman in this game didn't have a good way to deal with the Hero Hammer, and the Hero Hammer carried the game. Are all, the Regiment of Renown is not really worth it? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> C-Pile is like, Skavo ha always has been a hard counter to Lizardman and always been S plus 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 tier. Which, yeah, honestly? No, not honestly, but uh, yeah, as, uh, as Human Boy has shown here, Skaven is truly an S plus 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 tier. Skaven's always best, obviously. Yep, obviously. Now we're just kind of have to wait. <laughs> Wait for we're just waiting for the players to pick their armies and uh, for the match right now, and we're just chilling. We hand chucked a global ban Kislev and Lizardman. Bruh! The gentleman's agreement is always to ban Kislev, ban Cathay, and ban Lizardman, and maybe not Lizardman, but definitely ban Bretonia. Like, just, just global ban Kislev, ban Cathay, and Bretonia, man. Okay. Looks like we are uh, having a Skaven versus Berto uh, versus Beastman fight now. Interesting. This I feel like the Beastman would have quite a hard time dealing with the Poison Wing Globe ideas, unless unless Sipa once again go for the Santagor spam, the Zantagor spam. Then maybe the armor piercing of the Santagors will cut through the armor of the um, Poison Wind. Because one pro one problem of the fi uh, dealing with Poison Wind is that you can't just send in some light mobility and expect them to just die straight out. They have just too much armor to tank damage you throw at them. So like, if you send some, like say, Chaos of Warhounds, they will survive and keep chugging Poison Wind Globes into your line. So you need to send something with armor piercing. But then again, like... Um, if you just crush their front line and run over their back line, then it wouldn't be a problem. So we shall see what happens. After all, Skavens are quite weak to monstrous infantry, like Minotaurs. Uh, what else do they have here? Uh, Minotaurs, Chaos Bones, pretty much these two. So um, which Skavens do have a bit, of, uh, do struggle a bit more against. But yeah. Bretonia isn't toxic if you pick with the one elite grail unit rule. I think the grail unit rule is minimal. Like, it, they... The strictest they've ever been is still two grail units per game. Instead of one. So, you can still... So, like, yeah, it, it's still very strong even with that rule. So, I don't know. 
Oof. But yeah, looks like Skavens are ready and uh, we shall see what the Skavens bring once we load it in, of course. We're not gonna, we're not gonna just like, yeah, we're not gonna open it. Oh, Vermin League only allows, allows only one grill unit? Yeah, okay, that sounds very fair. Cause we chat and, uh, oh, fuck, I hate, I hate the YouTube uh, chat. Uh oh, and ban one. <laughs> Cause we chat in Ben. Oh, thank you for the thank you for the first stop, man. I appreciate it. I'm sure you have the same issue. Cause like, YouTube has the very brilliant idea to put like a, a heart button on the at the bottom right of the chat. But then, because the it's inside the fucking chat box, it blocks the freaking. Uh, it blocks a lot. Like the rightmost bit of the last line of your entire chat so it's it's there just blocking your it's just blocking your uh, ability to read the entire chat like when you want to read the latest chat line of the chat you can't you just can't because like there's a heart in the fucking way god damn it yeah 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 they should have just removed it like who the fuck cares about the heart if they really want a heart, they would just go into the emoji uh, keyboard and start putting in hearts manually. Uh, that is, or they can just put the heart in the emoji, like next to the emoji keyboard, like, uh, like, why do they, why do they even have this in the studio uh, chat box when, like, yeah, when, when. Like, as if they would assume the creator themselves, the streamer themselves, would put in the heart themselves. Well, Crow Metal, you see, if you don't have a chat, then you wouldn't have any annoyances at the chat. This is the brilliance of the design of this game. You know? If there's no, like, if, if the problem doesn't exist, if the, if the place that pro, uh, creates the problem doesn't exist, there wouldn't be any more problem. You see, that's how they, uh, resolve certain things. That's what happened with the in-game chat, if anything. But anyways, we shall wait for the um, ar armies to load in and then we can go through the army builds for sipa's beastman army a front line of uh wait do you just okay we have a lot of senegos here none of them armor piercing though and then four more units of chaos spawns these are the chaos monstrous infantry that the um, that the skavens definitely would struggle against as their infantry yeah, they don't do well. Don't hold well against these extreme damage dealers. Especially, especially they're unbreakable. So even if you damage them, they will still like push into the back line. And then of course Morgor the Shadow Gave just for more Chaos Spawns. He does have the have the staff and the Spirit Essence of Chaos both able to drop in additional Chaos Spawns. For the front line, there a bunch of Angols just going for sheer numbers here. They're flanked by some Angola spears and a ton of warhounds and sandagos, leading the army warrior and supported by the brave shaman of wild with only traitor kin. For the other side of the battlefield, it's pretty much a battle of uh, direct damage spells, because we have a Gracia of ruin coming in with none other than wait no oh this ruin this is not this is not the warp lock thing ah anyways oh it's given. Yeah, I might have mixed up the lores a bit here, but uh, so no direct damage spells on the Skaven side, but they do have Warp Lightning to damage enemy blobs and Howling Warp Gale to punish any flyers, which, well, there's none on the Beastman side, but in case there are Harpies. But uh, yeah, it's still a nice item, nice spell to bring regardless. A front line of uh, Climate Spears to slow down enemy advance and then some Poison Wind Globes to dish out the damage. A third line of 
monstrous infantry themselves, the Red Ogres, but definitely not as good as the Chaos Spawns. Some Skaven Slave Slingers to dish out the damage from afar and exploit the lack of armor on the Chaos Spawns. And then further back, Wolf Rats with Poison. You want to bring the Poison in this matchup because you wouldn't be wasting investment onto armor piercing and the poison can debuff enemy units and whatnot. I do am a bit worried about the Skaven build though, um, since they don't really have any good answers to a lot of problems right now. Like, Sandagos are gonna trade fine into Wolf Rats and uh, Red Ogres can barely hold- uh, they're, they're doing damage but they're also taking a lot in return. Wolf Rats are jumping in but Red Ogres uh, yeah, Red Ogres are also hopping onto the Chaos War Hounds over here. Warp Lightning is going down onto the Angorhurst who are taking quite a bit of Nilda Triple Damage. These guys are getting run over by the Bell. While in the forest here, oh, the Poison Wing Global are getting overwhelmed by Chaos Spawns and the War Hounds. Even with the heavy armor though, the Chaos Spawns have enough weapon strength to just punch them down. And uh, yeah, th those, those, um, those um, Poison Wing Globes are dead. Now the Wolf Rats move on to Skaven Slave Slings, which they also have no issues working through. And um, the Red Ogres, they are struggling to hold back all of these Beastmen mobility. Some of these Poison Wing Globes are secured, but uh, I don't know how much they can do in this instance. Morgor and the rest of the Angors are pushing back all the Skaven infantry. And if they're weak enough, then they would just turn into even more Chaos Spawn. So this is going to be pretty bad. While the um, Packmaster is jumping in, trying to stem the tide and punt uh, Morgor all the way back. Yeah. While the Red Ogres are still struggling to beat down the Chaos Spawns, they're doing damage. But the Chaos Spawns are unbreakable, so it'll take them time to work down their opponents. While the Poison Wing Globes needs to move in and start dishing out damage against the enemy infantry who are chasing off some routed clan rats. Somewhere it goes down the line, a little bit of a warp lightning. Probably, yeah, didn't really do much against the uh, Chaos Spawn. The Poison Wind though, they are doing quite a bit, but here comes a summon of Chaos Spawns and the second and the last unit of the Poison Wing Globes are pinned down. Oh, no, it seems like the Chaos Spawns are just spawned in and didn't actually have an attack order on the Poison Wing Globe, so they are retreating. Wolf Rats gonna clash against Chaos Warhounds. It's the battle of two Chaff mobility units. The Red Ogres, though, need to come in and screen off the red, uh, the Chaos Spawns as they are now punishing these Poison Wing Globes. Gracie of Ruin getting beaten up by a ton of Chaos Spawns surrounding him while the Assassin is also suffering at the hands of these immense weapons strength of the Chaos Spawns. And yeah, the Beastman rush is going just fine against the Skavens for now. And the Skavens simply don't have any answers to the Chaos Spawns really. Now a little bit of a flensing, a Traitorkin going down onto the Gracier of Ruin, draining his health. While the Packmaster trying desperately to beat down the Chaos Spawns over here, just... He, he, there's only one Packmaster, unfortunately, and he can't be everywhere with so many Chaos Spawns running all over the Skaven formations. Seems like Seepa got this? Yeah, it does seem so, as the Beastmen do have a pretty obvious upper hand in this fight so far. It's pretty much only the um, Packmaster left, and he most certainly can't carry this game on his own. And yeah, that might just be it here, as the, um, as everything on the Skavens are just running for the, the hills. Kill Spawns are running into the Red Ogres, and because of the Red Ogres' light armor, they will take a lot of damage, even from just a summoned unit. And the summons have uh, almost gotten their worth, honestly. They have been disrupting a lot of units, and then uh, just running over whatever they in their path, really. Yeah, they... they yeah... At this point, there's no point like delaying the inevitable, and there goes this game. I should save these uh, finals actually, just cause. Okay. Um, F and F.
GG to both Human Boy Yes Yes and Sipa here. Very nice rush of Chaos Spawns here, proving that Chaos Spawns are still the bane of Skavens. And um, the mobility did a lot of good disruption there. Basically, they trade well into the Red Ogres and Hounds, the Wolf Rats. And the Wolf Rats and the Red Ogres just died due to being Glass Cannon, unfortunately. Yeah. Things are quite rough for the Skavens in this matchup, I suppose. <laughs> Rip Skaven. Looks like Skavens are now back to the bottom tier. <laughs> yeah, there's a ton of mass for those Red Ogres to contend with, indeed. Indeed. A very nice use of the mobility, too, as well. Just everything is striking at all at once. A very good timing push. And um, Skaven simply do not have the ability to deal with so many threats from all sides all at once. And uh, the line and their defenses just crumbles entirely. Alright, we are blocking the screen once more. And waiting for Sipa and Human Boy to, uh, yeah. To pick the next, um, factions. Sano was trade well into Wolf Rats and Red Ogres on, on the charge. Indeed, they do. They do have some really good, um... Charge bonus, 42, not too shabby actually. For like a light, light cavalry at like 700 gold, yeah, it's good enough, honestly. Like Red Ogres themselves have 46 charge bonus. And with way less models, so they don't take the bonus of these uh, charge bonus as much. Just rewatch the Lizardman and Skaven game. I think the Quartal Aura does work, doesn't it? No, no. I don't think... Whoa. It did tell you your Skinks and Croxies were stopped. Hmm. Might, might need a bit more testing for that, but uh, we might do it later. Because I remember there's some... Um, basically, there's some um, video from Tequila Sunset showing that the Quartal stock um, is bugged. So, yeah. I mean, it might have... It might have the aura that tells you that your units are covered by the stock aura. By the Master of the Sacred Places aura, but it doesn't... I don't think it actually applies the stocking effect. So, that's why... Your... Uh, that's why the Crocs... Whatever units under the Quartos can still be shoot, shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! Sifa going for his Skavens now! Is he gonna try to one-up <laughs> Human Boy? And try to take over uh, the best Skaven player title? <laughs> Ooh! Uh, you might want to just go into the game and just quickly test it yourself and see if the stock still works. But yeah, you can uh, see what happens there. Um, but yeah, it seems like Sipa is going for Skaven while Human Boy is going for Ogre Kingdoms. Now, if Human Boy goes for a Stonehorn Monster Smash, then I think he pretty much got this one. Because I don't think Skavens have any way to deal with the Stonehorn Monster Mash. Other than maybe shoot it with Teeth Breakers? On but then again, if he brought a hunter for the um, thief stone, then he can be locked down by Snickage's um, death master sigil. But then again, he can just bring human boy can just bring a non-hero, non-character uh, stone horn. So there's that. So we shall see what he will bring in the end, but. Ogres does have a lot of monstrous infantry, but the problem is that unlike Chaos Spawns, they do have a rather low leadership. So there's that. That's just for 7 seconds, but hey, Teeth Breakers can do a lot of damage, okay? Don't, don't ever underestimate Skavens, the S tier faction of the entire game right now. Don't 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 do that, you know. 
Anyways, uh, right, I forgot to change the score, so let me just do that. There we go. Don't ever doubt Skaven's and their ability to win a battle. But yeah, we shall uh, wait a bit here. Okay, for the army belts here, human boy going for ogres, interesting, versus Skaven's of Sipa. Oh boy, I'm seeing Eshin triads. I do like, I think these guys are my favorite Skaven units, just cause they are quite a fun unit to use. Like they're they're relatively fast because they're how light they are. Fifty four speed, holy shit! <laughs> Almost as fast as some of the monsters. They can catch up to things quite fast, and they do damage really well if they can actually get a charge. But uh, unfortunately, if they don't get a charge, they're fucked um, because of how fragile they are. Yes, they have some physical resistance, but that only saves them so much. And uh, yeah, I do enjoy like picking them when I play Skavens, but unfortunately just not exactly a metal unit, so I rarely pick them even, so yeah, so yeah, not not exactly a unit I always use. Now, for the army build, for the on both sides, uh, we'll just go through Human Boys first, because he has his uh, formation a little bit more organized, a front line of Nobblers, a, a, and a second line of uh, Ogre Bulls, some of them with Iron Fist to... I don't think the Iron Fist is really that important here. I think Human Boy is just trying to get more Ogre Bulls on the field. Trying to get as much monstrous infantry out in the field as possible to run over the Skaven line. But anyways, um, Iron Guts further back in... And I think it's like three units of Iron Guts, maybe four? Uh, three units of Iron Guts, I think... Yeah, three units of Iron Guts. Four Saber Tusk Packs and uh, leading the army Slaughtermaster with... Oh, oh Troll Guts and Brain Gobbler. Very nice spell against the Skavens, minus 16 leadership. Although, Tinge does have a better spell, um, the Treason of Tinge. And uh, we have a very gorgeous monster here. Oof, look how beautiful this thing is. Hmm. The Snowhorn of Mon. Not only with a very, uh, not only with an opposable mass, but also having that missile resistance, the Glacial Defense boost to its uh, protection can help him tank out some of the Skaven missile, but there are no Skaven, like at least no armor piercing Skaven missiles in this um, game here. Night Runners in the front line, second line of Ashen Triads. Oh, three units of Ashen Triads only, and then four units of Red Ogres plus two more units of Skaven Slaves for a bit of a chaff bodies. And yeah, right at the start of battle, they're already beginning. How, how is, hmm, this is gonna be interesting how Sipa is gonna play this game as there's nothing to handle the nobblers maybe he can just charge in with the red ogres which kind of seems to be the case here leading the army a chieftain and uh, a kick claw they just dive straight into melee it's just too it's a skaven rush army boys and uh, the ogre bulls are taking quite a bit of damage from and the um, ashen triads they don't get me wrong the triads took a lot of damage too but they're just wiping out the ogre bulls immediately and the galatio uh and the Snowhorn of Mon is still lumbering towards the front line, not quite in there just yet. Red Ogres and the Ashen Trides are just dragging down all these Ogre Bulls, doing some really effective damage. A Trader, um, not Trader Grim, Flensing Ruin, draining the health of all these units in the vicinity. Uh, Skaven's really trying to overload this flank for the, of the Ogre Kingdoms, and they're doing so quite successfully, beating down all these Iron Guts and Ogre Bulls. All of them are just breaking right now. If there is a wolf rat unit in the vicinity to chase them down, they would be amazing, but alas, that is not going to happen here. But anyways, the Ashen Triads are getting quite a good trade into all the Ogre Bulls and Iron Guts. They're all down to like roughly half health after the initial shock damage from everything in the vicinity. Flensing Ruin has successfully drained away the health of a lot of these Ogre units, and they are running for the hills. Balance of Power is slightly in the Skaven's favor, but don't forget about the healing of all of these Ogre units. So, as soon as the Ogre starts coming in, the Balance of Power will be evened out a bit more. However, Ashen Trites are still fighting valiantly, and in terms of leadership for Skavens, they actually have a pretty high value. 64, it's not, it's not honestly not too bad for Skavens, honestly. Um, a lot of their units have like roughly 50 something ish. 
like even storm vermins only have like 60 ish 60 something um leadership so like 64 on the ashen triads not too shabby honestly uh anyways uh the night runners needs to start like keep shooting at things um and this but the snow horn of more in the terror is really kicking in as the skavens are starting to take damage from the engagements despite winning on the left flank their right flank has been collapsed entirely by a ton of uh the sheer weight of the ogre units now Ashen Triads are trying to snipe out the Sloth Master, but he will be fighting and holding for now. He's taking quite a bit of damage though, so if he goes down, takes out the healing for the Ogre Kingdoms, then the Ogre King, uh, and then the Skavens might be able to win this one. What we shall see here comes the Brain Gobbler, and the Red Ogres are forced into a chain route. Very nice use of the spell there. The minus 16 leadership is a significant factor in a melee fight, especially for Skavens, who is very lacking in terms of leadership. And um, the Skavens are now in, in the mass exodus. Yeah, it's their turn to run now. Saber Tusk Pack's also running down the Night Runners, and their massive weapon strength at 70 weapon strength can beat down the Night Runners pretty cost efficiently, and the rest of the Ogre Bulls are rushing too. Now that leaves pretty much a kick claw, Gorich, I forgot about him, and the Chieftain in the fight. Red Ogres are trying to converge around the Hero Hammer, but there is no healing in this Hero Hammer, so this might be a bit of a problem here. Um, Flensing Rune draining the health of the Slot Master, but the Slot Master is moving out of the way, so the Snow Horn and the uh, Iron Guts are not actually taking damage from the spell, it's just a, try a desperate attempt to snipe out the Slot Master. And right now, the Ogres are definitely having the advantage here. Balance of power is in the favor of Ogres, despite the Skavens having more damage value, simply because the healing is mitigating a lot of that value from the Skavens. But here comes a pitch engagement of a lot of armor-piercing entities here, beating down Iron Guts. The Skavens might be able to clutch this if they can just beat down the Snowhorn, and uh, just trying to use that hu uh, Hero Hammer to their advantage because the Ogres don't really have any support in this fight right now. While the Snowhorn is completely pinned in, he needs to move out and maybe regroup with other units so that they can just do another pitch engagement to run to converge onto this fight and beat down the remaining Skaven resistance. Still, Gorich is putting in some hurt with the um, Chieftain here. A lot of armor piercing going into the into the Snowhorn of Mon, but Butcher is keeping this beast alive. But the beast is uh, struggling to put hits onto the large targets here. Snowhorn of Mon um, doesn't have anti-large bonus, and the anti-infantry is not helping him here. But here comes a little bit of a cycle charging, pulling out and slamming into the Red Ogres. Now, the Skaven Hero Hammer is going after whatever units they can get their hands on, just trying to work down the ogre army one after the other slowly chipping away their units but they need another flensing ruin perhaps onto the snow horn they just really need to bring down the snow horn because they can't really separate and chase after the slaughter master right now oh here comes the flensing ruin onto the um, snow horn but here comes a butcher to counteract that so i don't know <laughs> it's it's a it's a good question whether they will have enough hit points left in the end <laughs> um to mitigate uh, the Trogoth might actually counteract the Flensing Ruin enough because of how high the HP pool is the Snow Horn of Morn can get a lot more healing than other units because of course healing is percentage based now unlike game 2 so yeah it actually ended up with more HP <laughs> than uh, getting hit by the Flensing Ruin after the uh, the Trogoth Anyways, AK Claude jumping on top of the um, Slot Master, trying to bump him into his death, but it's not actually working right now. Gorich and the Chieftain needs to come over here and bail Snow, uh, bail Ikit out of the fight against the Snow Horn of Morn, because that is gonna be a painful hit if he lands another hit. So Gorich and the Chieftain are coming over to beat down the um, beat down the Snow Horn, but the Saber Tusk Packs and the Iron Guts are also surrounding them, doing damage. Did Gorich bring his? Uh, Ooh, unlimited power is also further damaging a kid, pushing the balance of power of the Skavens further into army losses territory. Army losses might just come soon. They take even. Oh no, the, the chieftain is routed. A desperate attempt of flensing ruin to drain down the Snowhorn of Morn. It might balance the. Uh, it might even out the balance of power a bit more. 
it hits a lot of units after all. Um, the um, Ogre Kingdom units are in a mass exodus now, dragging back that balance so far a little bit more. But the Flensing Ruin is almost done, and it might, it's just probably not enough to drag this game back. Oh, things are looking really close right now. The three single entities, the Skaven Hero Hammer is barely hanging on, and the um, Snowhorn is still having four, oh, almost 4k HP lives. Honestly, I feel like. The Slot Master should just jump in and start fighting as well, because leaving the Snowhorn alone might not be the best scenario here. Yeah, might not be the best use. Oh no, the Chieftain is dead. Uh, but the Balance of Power is still is still barely hanging on for the Skavens. Oh, oh. Um, and Gorich is gunning for the Snowhorn. Like he needs, if he goes into a one v one versus the Snowhorn, he will take some damage perhaps. But uh. He still have enough melee stats to do quite a bit of damage here, especially with the sort of anti-heroes boosting his weapon damage, and he is putting quite a bit of hurt onto the Snowhorn. Oh, is it is it coming? Another big hit? It kick Oh, oh no! <laughs> the Snowhorn has a, his eyes onto a kid and just slams in. Oh no! This is bad. Oh, a dismember and a brain gobbler. Human boy is really dumping whatever he can to try and route a kid. If a kit runs and falls, then it is over for the Skaven. But if, uh, yeah, he, he can't hang on. Once he runs, army losses, hits, and victory for okay for the Belly Boys. Oh, that was such a close game. Two hits on a kit and army losses. That yeah, it is very unfortunate. And uh, if if Gorich has a bit more time. Then he probably can work down the Snowhorn and turn this game around. But unfortunately, this is not the case here. The healing on the Ogre Kingdoms is still too much despite the nerf. And the Snowhorn, with the terror and just the impact damage on the charge, was able to just run over the Skaven lines. Snowhorn bugged out a bit. Maybe. I don't really notice, but uh, yeah. Human boy tries to keep units separate, so flancing ruin gets minimal value. That's that's definitely what happened there. And yeah, looks like when you play a faction and know a faction well enough, then you also know their weaknesses and know the tactics to counter it. But yeah. GG to both players, and uh, Human Boy managed to survive in this best of three. We're down to the last game of the tournament stream. Not the last game of the entire stream, but the last game of the tournament. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, let's check out the value there. Uh, Asian tries, despite how much I love them, they still are a very glass cannon unit and just got ran over by the Ogre Bulls. They took a lot of impact damage from the non-armor piercing units. Uh, Pet Fighters did some really good damage, but the Excuse me, but the Night Runners barely earning back their value. So I suppose Ashen Triads is still not exactly the best um, idea here. And the Chieftain underperformed a lot. <laughs> Maybe it's better if you bring a Packmaster instead, just so you can boost Gorich health or something. Uh, Ogre Kingdoms um, did some. Yeah, it's pretty much the Snowhorn carrying the game. And I assume the um, Saber Tusks earning back their value mostly. Yep, they did. And yeah, it's pretty much just a healing crushing the Skavens in terms of a. Uh... Oh shit, I forgot. Oh, <laughs> I turned on the screen blocker prematurely. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's not too. That's not too important. Uh, yeah, but yeah, GG to both players. Uh, we have to wait a bit for the players to pick their last army of the night. And then we can go into um, replay reviews. Let's see afterwards. But yeah, we have a lot of replay files. Alright, I might actually make myself a cup of tea before uh, we start the uh, tournament replace uh, review. 
But yeah, we have a lot of replay files right now. Let me just start downloading them. Because <laughs> we have we we have a really good turnout for the, tonight's Friday night fights. 21 people showed up and checked in. So yeah, that's like three, four, four, five, five rounds of combat. Like some people got five rounds and some people got four, but yeah. Overall, very good, uh, very good turnout. And we also have very, <laughs> we have a lot of replays to showcase. Um, that's like what two, of course we showcase like a bunch from myself and Sipa, mostly Sipa. <laughs> he is the, if he wins, then he's truly the tournament. He tournament's protagonist we, he has to plot armor in this tournament now it would be really anticlimactic and surprising for human boy to clutch the win as the it a eh? is, is he the anti an antagonist of this tournament <laughs> oh boy uh but yeah on one hand we have a uh, sipa the, the the protagonist Sipa almost won GG. Yeah, he he almost he almost it almost won, but it was so close. The lack of healing really hurt them. Like maybe if they switched the chieftain into, if Sipa switched a chieftain into a pack master with a brute horn, maybe it would have worked better. Who knows? But yeah. It is still a very close and very good game though. Oh, let's see what factions are the players. Oh, all right. I need to, do to download files. All right, uh, so let me check my uh, files. Da, da, da. Man, I got so many replays. Uh, oh, we got a really grindy game. <laughs> Which probably approaches over at the 15 minute mark. Uh, but we shall see. And then Sipa, <clears throat> we don't have the battle with, oh, we have the replay with Sipa round one, which Borin sent in. So we basic, we basic, oh, and he sent, and Sipa sent in all his replays. Good. We have everything we need. Um, And yeah, we just have to wait for the, oh, it seems that it's a Tomb Kings versus Green Skin battle. Interesting. I, I don't, I'm not actually familiar with this matchup. I don't usually play green skins, nor do I usually play Tomb King. So I, I haven't played this matchup for a long time, but I, I tend to think green skins suffers a bit more on this matchup. I think the Tomb Kings have a bit more advantage, but I'm not sure. Green skin favorite from memory. Interesting. Oh, okay. I guess the skeleton front knight can is weaker to a green skin rush but i don't know i feel like tomb kings might have an advantage with their shooting 
so I don't know. Rob van der Veen. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying the stream here. Um. Hello, where can I find this 20? Um, actually join the Night Crew Discord. Let me just get a link. Join the Night Crew Discord and um, we occasionally have re um, tournaments here and there. I, I try to... I will try to s schedule more tournaments on the... Oh, hold on a second. Oh, RTK clan. Oh, you're from the RTK clan. Uh, yeah, join a like. Yeah, I would say just join the Night Crew clan Discord. I'll I'll post the link in the chat. Hold on. Join the Night Crew clan Discord. I will try to host more Friday night fights from now on. Um, also depending on um on my availability, unfortunately. Uh, since my work sometimes demands me like I need to put in some evening hours uh, Into my job these days like it's not like it's not like I'm, I'm doing stuff over time for free But I need to move my hours a bit sometimes to work in the evening So or I just have some other stuff in life to deal with so not necessarily able to host Friday night fights every week, but I will try to host more from now on um, just so more people can get together and play more um, on a more regular time, especially for EU, uh, since most of the casters are in uh, in America and can't really always do EU tournaments. But yeah, just join the Night Crew Clan Discord. We have a bunch of people in there playing occasionally as well, and um. And you can just check out the tournament section for like other tournaments or tournaments we host on the Discord. Yeah, and yeah, just join us and play whenever you're free. Uh, FNF is more on the competitive side. Yeah, it's it's. I I wouldn't say it's too competitive. It's I would still say it's like a relatively casual tournament where we just play like quick one best of ones for like most of the rounds until the end which is like best of three rounds so it's still very casual and you can just hop in play the games and be done um and yeah but depend on who your opponent is for sure pikman <laughs> that is very true that is very true like it doesn't have any entrance hurdles or anything it does not have a an elo matching unlike uh the vermin league so you might just run into like some really good players so who who the fuck knows um but yeah or you can just run into people who just started playing recently so you you never know um it, it all is decided by the rng gods of the <laughs> of the challenge page shuffling mechanic so we shall see but anyways we are having a tomb kings versus green skin battle now grand hierophant contempt DJ Katap or Katap on a horse? We shall see, but yeah, Katap versus a Night Goblin War Boss. Sipa going with uh, quite a few Shakti with great bows from that, um, from what we saw there. Anyways, let me, let's just change this. Okay. Okay, all good. And we wait. All right, army built. We, I'm just gonna drink some more water to stay hydrated. And then we can go check the army builds.
Alright, so for army builds, Tomb Kings are going with a front line of Skeleton Spears, second line of regular Ushaptis to hold on. Oh, they're going for a box build here, using this impassable terrain to protect one of their flanks, while the rest of the army are deploying on the right here, trying to strengthen the right flank. With a Tomb God Halberd here holding the right. There's also a Tomb God Halberd on the left there, acting as a bit of a reserve infantry in case the first line breaks. Anyways, Eyes of the Desert here laying an ambush on to the enemy monsters if there are any in case there are any like trolls and whatnot but uh yeah further back chosen of the gods and a regular ushauti with great bowls leading the army katap on horseback with Jav's incantation of curse blades naru's incantation of protection sandstorm it's a bound run right yeah uh, the bound sandstorm and of course the staff the lich staff of katap just probably gonna spam the cheap spells, Jaff's incantation of curse blades and protection, and uh, just constantly delay enemy casting time. Um, further back there, skeleton horsemen, three of them, and a screaming skull catapult with their discourage effect. They, can, oh, the tick cover effect minus eight leadership. They can effectively ruin and rout the um, green skin infantry. For the green skins, a ton of savage orcs. Savage orc begins two of them, and then um, the rest are just regular savage orcs. Oh, three savage orc begins. Night goblins, these are fanatics. Yeah, the, I think it's the eight peak loons. With. Oh, these are. Why is this still bugged? These regiment of renown, the warlord boys. Yeah, the warlord. Eight peak loons or warlord boys. I think the Warlord boys are not the ones with the Unbreakable. Apex Loons are the ones with Unbreakable, so yeah. They're Unbreakable and they can throw in the Vortex ability to throw in some of their spinning loons. Anyways, um, Savage Orcs are taking a lot of damage from the Ushapti with Great Bowls, especially from... Okay, they're taking a lot of damage from the Chosen of the Gods. While one of the Savage Orc Biggins are getting hammered by the Screaming Skull Catapults. However, they do have Frenzy, so they are immune to psychology right now. Goblins are running forward, but they won't be able to break through the skeleton. Uh, oh, a sandstorm here, but it seems that the preemptive casting is not exactly working too well. Only touching the very back end of the Savage Orc Biggins. However, the sandstorm might curve into other units like these Rusty Airs. And then there's, of course, for the Greenskins, a ton of Skirmish Cavalry, very typical of these guys. Having Morgoth's Magic Marauders and Death Creepers, the two staple ones. And then just a bunch of Squick Herds at the back there, Orc Borbor Biggins, one of them the Broken Tusk Mobs, and uh, an Orc Shaman with Brain Bursta and Fists of Gork. Just a bunch of area of effect damage trying to blast the Skeleton Infantry. Anyways, Naru's incantation of protection slowing down the damage onto the skeleton. Oh no, Jav's incantation of Chris Blade. Just trying to activate the Lich Staff now. I do think that Naru's incantation of protection would have been a bit better just to help the skeletons hold longer, but alas, they are gonna hold for now. Savage Orcs are rushing in from the flanks though. They do have a lot of numbers here. One of the Savage Orcs are pretty much a tattered uh, ruins since the Chosen of the Gods are just hammering them. But uh, these guys, they should be able to clear out the Skeleton Spears just fine. So the Tomb Gods might need to just run in and slow their push at some point. But at the back there, here comes the Orc Boar Boy Biggins rushing in, ready to threaten the back line of the um, bony, bony Boys. Oh no, a fermented fungi from the Night Goblin War Boss luring, uh, luring Katap into melee combat, also preventing him from activating anything. Uh, so a very nice use of the ability from the from human boy there Denying the tomb kings from their spell cast and the eyes of the desert doesn't really have a good target to shoot at Oh well, human boy might have an upper hand right now as they have opened up the one side of the box Allowing the death creepers and some savage or or uh, savage or begins to run in and disrupt the ushapti Chosen of the gods though are still shooting and blasting away at the rusty airs, but their front line is slowly crumbling to dust here as the Ushaptis are not able to hold on despite the support from all the um, skeleton spears. A summon Ushapti at the back there trying to hold back the Savage Orc Biggins and the um, regular uh, the, and the Death Creepers while the Orc Warlord Biggins managed to shut down the Screwing Skull Catapults. Although one of the Orc Warlord Biggins actually got shut down by the 
by the tomb gods with their halberd. So things are can still go both ways right now. But the rusty ears are doing some really good work against the um, eyes of the desert here. Slowly chipping away their health with their anti-large, uh, no anti-armor attacks. Not exactly armor piercing, but armor sundering does help them a lot here. A little bit of a brain burster, blasting away some of the tomb gods who are desperately trying to hold back the um, orc war boy biggins. Another wall has been popped, and the Greenskins might just be able to push through all these skeletons and Ushaptis as they are crumbling to dust. And if they manage to push through, then the Chosen of the Gods, all these missile contingents are exposed to the Greenskin rush. However, the Tomb Gods might just be able to hold them back for now. Nerus and Gantage are protection, trying to keep them tanking in this fight here, as the Ushaptis are retreating back to safety, or in a desperate attempt to retreat, while this summoned Ushapti is hold in the last few seconds of its life, it is trying to hold back a ton of greenskin units. And uh, Eyes of the Desert on the last leg as well, slowly crumbling, but they managed to rally. Now the Chosen of the Gods really needs to start turning around and shooting, because there's not much they can do right now, <laughs> other than just trying to finish off all these clumped up green skins as much as possible a lot of green skins are clumping up which is a might be a big mistake on human boy right now another jobs incantation of curse plates just to add in that bit of a cooldown time but here comes all these green skin missiles oh th this is why you don't blop up human boy oh the sandstorm oh it ruined us. so many, so many hopes and dreams of the Savage Orc Biggins. Oh, that was a brutal sandstorm. Oh, if if some of these Savage Orcs were able to just spread out and keep pressuring the Ushaptis, I think the Greenskin would, would have sealed their victory. But, oh, this is a mass exodus of Greenskin troops there. One of the Tomb Gods are almost dead, but this is definitely a worthy trade. As that annihilated so many, so many Orcs. Now the Death Creeper, oh, Mogros Manu Marauders are charging in, trying to disrupt the Ushaptis here, but um, the Eyes of Desert are here to hold them back for now, but a Fermented Fungi luring the Chosen of the Gods into melee combat, but the um, Mogros Manu Marauders are being pushed back. The other um, Ushaptis are still fighting, while the Tomb Gods here might actually need to come back and start saving their uh, constructs, but these Tomb Guards are pressuring back the Rusty Airs, who are almost out of ammo anyways. So I've I don't think that's much of a concern for now. In instead, they really need to bail out the Chosen of the Gods. Katab is uh, was chasing off some stuff uh, on the far side, but he's also that means he's not able to help out the fight over here. Not that he's that much of a help, but well, right now things are still quite even. But yeah, that 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 blob real might have cost Human Boy his victory here. But Sipa putting also putting up a really good fight so far. Chosen of the Gods hang on, barely, but still hanging on. But the problem is that the Tomb Kings are really running out of resources right now. They don't have the mobility. Oh no. The the orcs that were routed by the Sandstorm earlier were able to return because there's no mobility to route them off. Another brain burst up from the um, Greenskins, blasting some of these Tomb Gods. But they. If. Okay, if the missiles are done for, then the Tomb Gods do have a chance to grind it, th grind this whole thing out. If they can just keep getting support and maybe free up the um, Ushaptis. But uh, right now, Katab is, seems to be focusing on just routing things instead of saving the um, Chosen of the Gods. Like, the Chosen of the Gods are in, are very important in winning the fight for Greenskins because Tomb Gods will lose against a trade, a straight up trade against the Savage Orc Biggins. So, they need something to work down on the um, Savage Orc Biggins and. Tomb Gods is not exactly the solution they need right now. And Chosen of the Gods down to 500 HP, 4 unit models. Oh, this 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 might be a bit bad. This might be bad. They need to they need to save themselves and start shooting. But oh, another model gone. The entire unit is has crumpled to dust. Ah, yeah. I don't think the Tomb Kings have this one anymore. Um, because Tomb Guards, yes, they are nice. They are they have pretty solid melee stats. But uh, oh. Another brain burst up, blasting away. Oh, this this is bad. And that just leaves a very healthy Katap, who could have helped here and uh, saved their Chosen of the Gods, but alas, it is not gonna happen this time. The only thing that's holding the balance of power for the Tomb Kings is uh, is Katap. 
and he is too busy chasing off routed units. Yes, it is very important to chase off routed units, but without without the units to do the damage, it it doesn't matter. Oh, lo losing that chosen of the gods is a painful man. Like if if the chosen of the gods were able to just get say maybe Katap just jump in and try to save the chosen of the gods and uh, maybe sacrifice a bit of their, his HP. Then the Chosen of the Gods can just do more damage to the rest of the infantry, but um, with only like, what, 50 armor on the Tomb Gods? They they could not trade against the Orc Biggins with their impressive weapon strength of uh, 42 on the, the Biggins and uh, 35 on the regular Savage Orcs. But right now, as of right now, there's only Katap left, and I don't think he has what it takes to win the game. He, he can still try, though, but like, what 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 can he do right now? If he jumps onto the um, Savage or begins, he, he's gonna die with only 40 armor. But uh, yeah, I guess he can still keep chasing. And delay. Uh, chasing off these or Boar Boy Begins is simply delaying the inevitable. I mean, we shall see what happens in the end, but I, I, I don't think. Green Skin Lord could just dual Katap and go for army losses, pretty much. Olaf, I hate sand. I'm sure, I'm sure a human boy and Anakin would uh, concur with you. Does Katam have any bound sandstorms left? No, I actually checked earlier. No, um, but yeah, he did use used up all three. Like one when he used one when the Greenskins were marching towards him, trying to do a preemptive uh, sandstorm. Didn't do that much damage on that one. Um, and then I think he did a second one. Wait, when did he use a second one? But yeah, the third one was definitely devastating, but that was the last one. But yeah, Cut Up has no choice but just to run back into melee now, but Death Creepers are coming up just to shoot him in the face. He can dodge, but like, I, I don't think he even cares right now. Like, he, he doesn't have stand any chance against all these green skins. It's just a suicidal YOLO charge. Can we? Oh, come on. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's just do this. Okay. Oh, and he got the fermented fungi, and uh... Yeah, he got fermented fungi, just got lured into the fight. Oh, hold on. Let me go for somewhere with better lighting. And yeah, he's surrounded by Orc Biggins, uh, Savage Orc Biggins, and um, Savage Orcs. Casting a spell of Jaff's Incantation of Curse Plate. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He, he, his HP is rapidly dropping under so many... Oh. Even the Orc Shaman is in the fray now. Punching him in the face. Just hurts, man. Hurts. And there goes the last game. And yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me just uh, FNF. Yeah, that is the last game for this tournament. Stream snipe OP. <laughs> Anyways, uh, GG to both players. GG to both Sipa and Human Boy. It seems that Sipa is not truly has failed to uh, turn this stream into his own. Uh, turn into the protagonist of the stream as he failed so close. Yet so far in the final match against Human Boy, yes, yes. It was a very impressive sandstorm though. The root sandstorm was really good, but unfortunately, it was not enough to pull the game back as Katap did a lot of kills, but the rest of the army, the the Eyes of Desert did not carry their own weight. Neither did the other Ushati getting disrupted as the skeleton crumbled to dust. The savage orcs were able to come in, disrupt their shooting, and they were not able to dish out much damage afterwards. 
Chosen of the Gods definitely did some solid work, but the Ushaptis, no. They just got worked down by the Savage Orc Biggins. Tomb uh, the Tomb Guards did solid, though. Even against, like, a bad trade, like, against the Savage Orc Biggins or the regular Savage Orcs. Um, they did they did what they could, but uh, the rest of the army, not so much. Screaming Skulls didn't earn back its value. Perhaps it is time to just cut this artillery out and maybe bring some more Tomb Guards instead. And uh, Skeleton Horses... Uh, oh, these are horses, not Necro Horsemen. That's why they died so fast. Okay. That makes sense. And uh, yeah. Unfortunate for the Tomb Kings there. As uh, as the box was quickly broken up by the Greenskin Rush. Savage Orc Biggins did some very solid damage over the course of battle and a lot of kills. Um, Orc Borboy Biggins did some solid work as well. Not so much for the Broken Tusk mob. But uh, yeah. Overall, very nice use of the rampaging abilities of the Greenskins. Just pinning down the missiles in... Uh, the last one pinned down... No, the second last one pinned down the Chosen of the Gods into melee combat. While the first one lured Katap into melee, disrupting his spell casting as well. Very nice use of the abilities. And oh, Rusty Ares did a lot of damage. Same goes for the Death Creepers. The missiles are really useful in this game here. Especially with the Armor Sundering. Apex Loons fought to the death, did some solid damage, earned back their worth, but uh, the rest of the army did all right. Squigs uh, did all right, but uh, yeah, that's about it. But yeah, GG's to everyone. It's a tragedy as yes, the protagonist has fallen. But yeah, GG to everyone who played in the tournament. Big thanks to everyone who showed up, and uh, I hope you all enjoy the battles in the um, Quick Tournament for now. And uh, yeah. Congratulations to Human Boy for winning in this Friday night fight. And um, don't don't drop off just yet, everyone. Hold on for a second. As we are uh, moving on to the replay reviews soon. But first, let me just go and mix some tea. Uh, I need some hot drink to soothe my uh, voice first. And then we can go into the... Uh, to all the replay files I received from uh, the past couple hours. But yeah. Gonna... Go off for a quick few minutes and then be back with a cup of hot drink.
All right, I'm back. Uh, let's just go into the replay now and uh, check out what happened before the finals and pick up all the missed games that we uh, did not watch. Actually, let me just find the download file. <laughs> I haven't moved them into this yet. So, there we go. And we have a lot more replays now. Let's see. We've got a total of 10, 11 replays to check out. So that's probably going to be another hour or two. So yeah, we have a lot of stuff to watch, boys. Um, now let's go for the first one. Rider Rohan versus Tequila Sunset. Dark Elves versus Grand Cathay. Interesting. Um, for the Dark Elves, they are going for a skirmish heavy approach <laughs> with seven shades. That's a very shady army, I would say. Um, and two more Dread Knights, three Dark Riders, and a. Is that a Soul Stealer? That's. We shall see. Is that a caster of Soul. Uh, a Soul Stealer Sorceress or whatnot? Oh, it's the Supreme Sorceress of Fire. And uh, let's slow down a bit here. For the Grand Cafe, going very infantry heavy and uh, not much missiles actually. Peasant Long Spears, four, five, four, three units of Jade Lances, um, one Empress Crowman and more Crowman on the other side, and then one more Righteous Lances of Waging. I haven't seen these guys in quite a while actually when you, I think about it. And leading the army, a Celestial General on the Celestial Lion. Coming in with all the le with the leadership. No, it's that's the wounded wounded pride. Hmm. Anyways, brass cleaver. That's a lot of attacking items. Brass cleaver adding attack and then uh, wounded pride if he drops down to fifty percent, but uh, less than fifty percent HP. That's another five attack. That's thirteen attack. And then oh, celestial sweep. They have to ground themselves first, but uh, overall, and the fearsome roar that can be quite useful in buffing enemy leadership for the rest of oh there's also one jet line to provide harmony and a an alchemist for searing doom and plague of rust but that's about it plague of rust is quite useful in in dealing with core knights though since the plague of rust can drop their armor down to 60 and then you charge in with like say jade lances and then they will be a lot more effective in dishing out the damage but right now it seems that all the shades are vanguard deployed behind the cafe lines and Cafe is not exactly suspecting this yet. But the uh, missiles are gonna start unloading. Burning head on to the peasant long spears as well. Oh, these Jade Lancers getting annihilated by the armor piercing fire. Only a few volleys, and the unit is almost entirely dead. Now, these Jade Lancers realizing the enemy are behind them try to go after the back line, but the Dark Riders are here to pin them down, sacrificing their lives to buy more time for the Shades to start dishing out damage. Tequila says, I thought he was moving his shit through the forest. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, nothing was seen. Nothing was can, could, could have been seen. Tequila says, that did not see this coming for sure, as the Shades appearing behind him and just shoot everything down. But the Mr. Amira, very nice cast there, silencing the Shades for a while. But that didn't stop the rest of the Shades from shooting and a lot of stuff just got annihilated there. Uh, Ooh, the Dark Riders got ganged up on by a bunch of Onyx Crowmen, right shit lance lances and whatnot, but uh, right now the Shades have turned their fire on to some of these Onyx Crowmen and they're just suffering from a lot of firepower. However, ooh, why did the Jade Lancers stop there? This might be a fatal mistake. Anyways, Jet Line jumped in. Same goes for the Righteous Lancers of Waging jumping in, just silencing these Shades. But the Shades can hold their own in combat for a bit. Not the best, but they, they, they will do a bit of, of damage when they're fighting. Especially the ones with dual weapons. They can fight back Crowman pretty effectively, but right now, whatever shades that are occupied means that they're just sacrificing time for their brethren to keep shooting. Which is what exactly happened right now. The Jade Lance, uh, the Righteous Lances are charging one shade, but they're while they're occupied, the other shade was able to just fire at their flanks and start chipping away their health. While at the back line, some of the shades are now secured with the 
Cohen Dread Knights pushing back any mobility that Cafe throw at them. While the Shades continues to fight on with their decent attacks, that's 51 attack, 33 ma uh, defense under the boost of the murderous prowess they are holding for now and beating up peasants. Dread, Dread Knights fighting against peasants should be fine, Searing Doom chipping away the Shades health, but it won't be affecting them too much. Killing like one, three unit models, a bunch of HP damage, but mostly the unit is intact and will be able to keep shooting. And the Cafe Army, oh, I hate. Oh, I shouldn't have picked this map for the first game. The lighting is horrible. Anyways, um, yeah, Celestial General is fighting in the midst of a bunch of Shades, but the Shades fight on due to their good leadership and good melee stats. While the Cafe units are faltering, Burning Hat whittling down their leadership, whittling them down in both body and spirit, and the Peasant Long Spears are routed. Now Jade Lancer is trying to put. Jade Lion tries to push through. Jet Lion tries to push through and get on top of the Shades, but they're distracted by the by the Dread Knights once again, and the Cathay Cavalry are slowly but surely getting reduced to nothing. As the Reichshead Lost Lances, they manage to finally break the Shades over here, but at what cost? They themselves as a, as a unit is down to one man and one horse. One Longma, and uh, yeah. That is pretty much the end, I suppose. Uh, a desperate roar from the Celestial Lion. It's not gonna do much. It's like... The Shades leadership are still pretty solid, thanks to them being Dark Elves instead of uh, another more, f more uh, clumsy and cowardly faction. They are... Uh, And that, that I think that's basically it. Only the celestial um, general is remains, and everything can just turn around and shoot everything into army losses. Taking lessons, I've never, I've never been on this map before, and I never know that Vanguard Zone is like this. Ha! Ah. Wait, which map was this? Valley of Thieves. But yeah, anyways, the double jet lion. Oh, there are two jet lions. Uh, but they didn't actually do much here. They shut down the shades for a bit, but then they only have sh so the the ability only lasts so long. It doesn't really have enough uh gas to carry the game. While the jade lances, oof, they 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 took a lot of hurt from all those armor piercing fire, and the shades mostly earned back some very solid value, two thousand gold worth of damage value, on one of them. And the Burning Hat did some really solid kills on the Peasant's Spears. This is a, this is a name that spoils it, but uh, let's, let's just go in. Looks like Eltharion is not... Uh, is not an impressive... Uh, surprise, surprise, Eltharion sucks. Alright, for the army builds though, Eltharion probably on his uh, Stormclaw, Stormwing. Um, and then, yeah, totally mixed that up with Deathclaw. But yeah, Stormwing, Flamespy, Phoenix, three Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers to counteract Skaven Artillery, four Silver Helms, and uh, a line of Spears mixed in with Archers and Lothan Seaguard with Shields. While on the other side there, we have a front line of Skaven Slaves, Climb Rats, Skaven Slaves, more, oh, oh, these are not Skaven Slaves, these, these are Storm Vermins with Sword and Shields. And then we have uh, Plague Monks for a little bit more of anti-infantry power. Uh, oof. And at the back there we can see the Plague Claw Catapults are already opening fire at the Archer line and are doing some very solid work. Hopefully can, they can annihilate the Archers before they themselves are being sniped out by the um, Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers. Very nice micro from... Elf. From Rider, Rider of Rohan, they're doing some nice sneaky ch cycle charging, jumping onto the Skaven Slaves, just doing as much damage as possible with impact damage with the charge impact. But Eltharion, oh no, he is failing. Oh, he's on a horseback, he's not on Stormwing. He got locked down by a whole ton of Red Ogres and is getting sniped by a bunch of armor piercing entities, including Death Master Snickage himself. Eltharion got routed. Pain. Pain. And he and they don't really have a way to get him back when Eltharion just refuses to get out of this surround. Oh, he just got 
outright sniped. Dead. Leaving his horse very lost. Uh, and with that, Eltharion is dead. While the bombardment continues, thankfully he's not on storm wing, so he doesn't exactly cost the most, and the archers still have a the, the high elves still have a bit of fighting left. I still have a bit of fight left in them. But uh, yeah, one of the plate claw cannibals are still online while the eagle claw continues to fire back. But they're the eagle claws are not doing damage fast enough as their front lines are getting devastated by the storm vermins and plate monks. The storm vermins, when fighting against just regular spears and uh, Loven Sea God, despite not being the best elite infantry, are still more than enough to fight through the rest of the high elf infantry. While the while the Silver Helms, despite the nice cycle charging at the beginning, but with the Red Ogres catching up and just keep pushing them, they don't ha really have that much space to like pull back and cycle charge, and as a result they just got stuck in melee, getting hacked down eventually by all those armor-piercing combat. While the Eagle Club Ultras, despite still firing, they don't really have much fight in them right now, they can't do damage fast enough to deal with all these Skaven numbers. Some of the Silverhams return, but alas, what can they do against such reckless melee rush? I guess the Skavens, I guess the Skavens picking like a melee rush army definitely countered the kite that uh, Rider of Rohan attempted, and as a result, oof, everything is just getting pushed back. The Sk the High Elves didn't really have enough space to kite. Like I can see this. Um, cavalry heavy belt working against like say a Skaven box with the um, cavalry just trying to like do some sneaky cycle charging trying to pick around trying to tear apart the Skaven box but in this instance with everything just pushing there's not no time or space left for the um, for the silver helms to do any maneuver to circle around and cycle charge or anything so yeah the Eagle Claws were putting on the pressure, but the High Elves... Uh, the, like the High Elf Artillery? Ha! <laughs> the Skavens don't really care about that, they just push. Push, 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 and push, and eventually the High Elves get crushed. That's about... that's basically what happened. And uh, the High Elves is falling apart entirely, especially losing Altharion <laughs> early in the game was a pretty heavy blow to the High Elves. Losing that magic support, I, but I don't think that really matters in this instance because the high elf build is just entirely countered by the Skaven melee rush, especially with the storm vermin. That 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 was the high elves were not prepared to deal with too heavy infantry. But yeah, Rider of Rohan, ah. Set times with Altharion. He still did some damage, but like, yeah, not enough to do much here. And the rest of the um, high elf attempted kite was not. It's not really a kite, but more like a more like a skirmishy army. It's not really a kite when you can't really kite with artillery. It's more like a harassment. Ar that sounds very illegal, but yeah, it's like it's more like a harassment tactic, trying to like. Do some sneaky psycho charges and p tear apart an enemy box, but overall it just doesn't work against a melee rush like that. Like the melee rush just entirely pushes, but I suppose Human Boy was also probably trying to box a bit with the play call catapults. But once he saw those three eagle claw ball throws, he just gave up on the boxing. Just entire army just pushes forward. Trying to dish out as much damage with the play call catapult as possible while the rest of the army tries to just get to the enemy lines. It's uh, it's a very direct approach. You see people like, oh, trying to like sit back with the Eagle Club all for us. Oh yeah, alright. I'll just send everything I have and uh, crush their defenses and all that. I just don't give, just don't give your op opponent any breathing room to like sit back and shoot or like do any psycho charge. And yeah, <laughs> snickage and straight up sniped. Eltharion and uh, the rest of the army just ran over the rest of the high elves. Red Ogre's doing some really solid damage and uh, Storm Vermins. <laughs> Storm Vermins, boy. <laughs> you don't see that every day. But I do find that heavy infantry um, is actually pretty good into high elves. Like, 
one of my favorite build into high elves as the Norse skin is just to bring Norse skin Marauder champions. Because normally people don't actually bring sword masters. <laughs> Seems like some of the lords from earlier game versions need upgrades. Yep, certainly. They need a lot of... <laughs> some of the... Oh my. Like, let me think. Ungrim is one of them. Definitely need some upgrades. Uh, Eltharian definitely needs upgrades as well. Um, Wolfric is fine. Throck is fine. But yeah, I, I do find Ungrim... Ungrim and Thorgrim, if anything. They still kind of suck. These days, compared to Thoric. Belagar! This might be a controversial tick, but I think he's fine. Because Belagar... Like, he, he's not the most amazing lord, but as a duelist, he is solid. But anyways, next battle. Uh, Joyboy versus Cyrus. Vampire Coast versus Beastman. And I'm on... I'm fielding Spanish names now. Because Joy Boy is a um, member of the MTK clan, which is also a Spanish clan. But yeah. For the army builds here, Vampire Coast going for a... Va Death God. Double Death... It's a, it's a bit of a box for sure, but like... A uh, front line of pistol mobs, yeah, and a second line of regular melee blo uh, mobs. Then halberds at the back there, third line. It's two of them, the death gods with halberds. Three more handguns and uh, some lampreys revenge. And in disguise, three gun bats, regular pistol droppers. And uh, leading the army, of course, Count Noctilus, as usual, coming in with uh, one zombie summon abilities, which is the captain's raw... Captain Rolf's Moondial. Uh, no regular zombie summon magic, just Melkov's and the Invocation of the Hack for healing. On the other side of the battlefield, yeah, on the other side, that's all the. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, on the other side of the battlefield for a beastman, for some reason, two Angor Spears are deployed all the way on the other side of the map, probably forgotten, while the beastmen are Vanguard deployed and attempting a rush here. A front line of uh, regular Angors and mixed in with Angor Spears, plus more Angors at the back and Angor Raiders. Archers, very cost efficient against the uh, Vampire Coast usually. Uh, especially when there's no mortars on the map, so they can trade really well into gunpowder units. Angor Spears are pushing, more Angor Raiders are at the back. Minor tools with great weapons are held in reserve, which is of Kalgan God. And then there are some throwing axes moving up, but uh, they need to back off before they get caught by the halberds. Grookoofs of, of Wolf's Run still holding back in the tree line, and the Sandigals throwing axes are also on the field. Now the spears are pushing forward, um, and because of... Interesting enough, because of all the Beastman units over here, the Vampire Coast's attention is dragged to the right side of the map, and they are not actually... Um, reacting to, they can't even see the Angor Spears, but these guys are pushing up, and uh, they are not actually counteracted by the beast, uh, by the Vampire Coast at all. Anyways, which is pushing all the way into the back line, trying to shut down some of these pistol mobs. But they are getting hit hard by all the um, handgun fire, pistol fire, and, and the Malkov's mystifying miles, not slowing them down with lampreys revenge counter charging. But here comes the beastman push. Everything is getting thrown into this side. Even the growth coast of Wolf's Run is getting into melee distance, getting close enough to just chuck axes into the Lampreys of Revenge. The handgun, uh, the regular deckhand mobs are not holding at all, as the Zangors are pushing up and wrecking them in melee combat. With the Minotaurs helping out as well, Morgoth the Shadow Gave with a summon of Chaos Spawns was able to just crush the zombie frontline and now getting into the backline here. Getting on top of Death Guards, he, he should be fine with his regeneration. It's not the end of the world, even if he's not the best melee combatant. Pistol mobs are disrupted while Angor Spears can start moving up. While the deck droppers here are just shooting at Angor Spears for now. They might actually be needed more over here to shoot at the Grukovs of Wolf's Run, but they're not really exactly doing that as the pistol fire are all aiming at Angor Spears. 
yeah, they need something to deal with the Grokovs because they can chuck all the axes into the fray and just work down in the Lambrys of Revenge, which is exactly what they're doing right now. Lambrys of Revenge being tied down by Manodors don't really have the leisure to deal with the Grokovs or Wolf's Run. While Count Noctua is fighting in the middle of a bunch of t uh, Death Guard support, he is doing fine for now, but overall his army is kind of... A lot of units are not in where... It, are not where they're, they're needed, actually. Like, these gunnery mobs need to turn around and start shooting at stuff like, say, the, the archers, the group of, of Wolf Run, or, or yeah, or any Senegals with ring axes. Like, these pistol mobs finally moving over to shoot at the Senegals, but it might be a bit too late now. Lamprey's Revenge has been slaughtered by the Furring Axes. Now I've got still surrounding Morgor, but they need to just push other targets right now. Like, zombie Deccan mobs need to push over over here and start uh, threatening and pressuring the Angor Raiders. Deck Dropper is still shooting at random targets. Okay, this is pretty bad. Um, balance of Fire is still quite even. But one thing to note is that Morgor is... Uh, oh, Morgor is just tanking that those... Uh, Rave Storm, like a chat. Grukov's still very healthy and now shooting and the rest of the Death Gods to pieces. Uh, all the pistols, de um, handguns are aiming down at Morgan, but it, it really doesn't matter for him. He has a ton of missile resistance, man. 75% missile resistance. He, he would just eat those um, missiles for ages. And if anything, they should start aiming at the Zangors and work them down instead, but it might... Yeah, aiming at Morgor is definitely a big, big mistake. Yeah, and all the shots into Morgor is wasted. Like, he... Count Nautilus can just go one-on-one -on -one Morgor at, with... Um, in the late game or something. Like, don't waste the missiles into Morgor, man. Just shoot the freaking Zangors. Even if they have shields, it's still better than shooting at, Zang uh, at Nautilus. Or better, shoot at the Grookoops. But, uh, oh, uh, alas. Alas. Morgor is just pushing now. There's there's no stopping of him. And uh, deck droppers are still at the back shooting at random targets. Uh, zombie pirate deck and mobs probably should just push the Rungo Raiders instead of going to fight. Oh yeah, I, I'm seeing... I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joy Boy. I'm seeing a lot of micro mistakes here. Um, but yeah. Now the handguns are completely disrupted by Morgor the Shadow Gave. Um, yeah, never... One thing to note, never ever aim at Morgor with missiles. It's not worth it. It's just a waste of your bullets and uh, arrows and whatever ammo you have. Um, yeah, over there, Manitoles are returning to the fight while the um, deck droppers are getting crossfire to their death. At this point, they might as well just drop down and fight the Angor Raiders. Not that they will win, but it's still better than just sitting there and getting shot to the face. At least they get a bit of value. Uh, Black Spot will get charged by Mino Tools. Count Nautilus needs to come over and help out, but uh, yeah, I don't suppose he's gonna he's gonna get there in time or anything. Because the Black Spots are in a bit of a pickle. They do have a bit of anti-lodge fighting bonus, so they can probably fight back, but they'll still take a lot of damage. That is not cost efficient. Zombie Halbert still fighting on the other side. Dragging down Chaos Spawns, but these are just summons, so they're just kind of wasting their time here. While the Brave Shaman of Wild running on the Tusco Chariot is just rolling on the post. And yeah, I think this might be the end of the Vampire Coast. As they lost the last of their missiles, just no. Oh, Black Spots getting dragged into a fight with Zangors. Yeah, they're, they are gonna get slaughtered. Uh, and the zombies are not around to help. Uh, Count Oxalus also too far to help. Uh, the last last hope of um, of the Vampire Coast have been finished off. I'm Unfortunately, I just saw way too many big mistakes on the Vampire Coast side. Also, using Melkoff's on on Morgor, bad choice there. Very bad choice as a... Uh, it probably worth more just to like just drop them on some Dangors, Dangors or, or Angor Raiders or whatever. Better than, Mal uh, than Morgor, the Shadow Gave for sure. Because whatever minimal damage you do to Morgor with Melkoffs, it's not going to be worth it. You just heal back up with uh, regeneration, so yeah. The Forgotten and Gorus Spears turn out to be a useful distraction. Call in fact, luring missiles that would have hurt more going into Minos. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the... I, I just saw a lot of uh, targeting... Never knew Morgor has insane missile resistance. 
I think it's just like people. Wait, I'm. Just... I think people would just play so much with uh, Traitorkin. With the lore of Traitorkin these days, they just kind of forgot about Morgur. Or check. Or forgot about checking Morgur's missile resistance. I don't know, because like, I feel like this is like um, a common knowledge in game 1 and 2 that Morgur has insane missile resistance. Uh, Pikmin, yes, Steam's uh, stream's still going because we still have like, what, 10, 10 more replays to check out. But yeah. It's like, I feel like it's a common knowledge in the multiplayer community that, like, uh, Morgur has insane missile resistance in game 1 and game 2. I don't know, like, I feel like I just see less Morgur these days, just so you just can't, you just don't notice it as much. Was it even more insane in game 2 though? No, it's, it's, I think it's always around 75%. So it's, uh, it's pretty much on par. Yeah, anyways, never shoot at Morgur with missiles. It's not worth it. Um, yeah, Mino Taurus did some eh damage. Um, mostly it's just the uh, Grukovs and the Throwing Axes doing the damage to the Lampreys Revenge. Oh, the Zangors did some pretty good work, but the uh, rest of the army not so much. I assume quite a bit of work was done by the Chaos Spawn Summons too. While the um, Vampire Coast army... One of the Death Guards did fine, the other not so much. Black Spots did a lot of damage. They could have carried the game. But the targeting mistakes really cost the Vampire Coast their game, honestly. Ugh. It's it's a bit painful to see. I like a lot of spell miscast misuse and not miscast, misuse of the of Melkoffs and uh, bad targeting. I think it's what like led to Joy Boy's demise. Tequila versus Rohan, we, we've seen that. Uh, Sipa versus Boring. Tinge versus... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Okay, we have to load in again. Actually, oh shit, the graphics we need to lower it a bit, hold up a second. Do we really need building detail? We probably don't. And uh, yeah. Yeah, just turn on close simulation since we can't see it anyways. Nope. Let's see if this helps. My CPU a bit. It's burning through my CPU. <laughs> it, it it peaked at 100 degrees. Like shit, man. Also, doesn't help that I have a stock cool uh stock cooler. Anyways, all right for Tinge, we have um three Tinge knights. Three screamers and five marauders. All right, for the army builds here, we have a front line of marauders of Tinge, a few chaos knights of Tinge, and then in the skies, three screamers and a uh, soul grinder of Tinge. One single soul grinder, and then a Kairos fate weaver leading the army. Uh, he, the bird is out of the cage now. The bird is out of the cage with blue fire, pendulum, and of course, gaze, gaze of fate. And on the other side, um, a front line of Black Ark Corsairs and uh, a single Helebroni for protecting the flanks. And same goes for the other side with a single Dread Speeders. At the back there are Cold One Knights, two Cold One Knights in, and also a single Blood Wreck Medusas, Supreme Sorceress of Soul Stealer and Soul Stealer only. And that's, uh, oh, Cross of Cain as well. Ooh, two Medusa. Interesting. I suppose it's uh, the double terror trying to just route off marauders early, which can be quite useful. But then again, you have the supreme sorceress. But so it's probably the missile trade 
on both sides. Oh, very nice blue fire hit there. Taking out a ton of health from the Blood Wreck Medusa with a single blue fire. But the Medusa has has started firing. Not sure if it's gonna be a worthy trade in terms of missiles there. But yeah, the missiles are chipping away the health of a lot of these Chaos Knights. Uh, it, oh, okay. It's not a bad. It's not a bad call with the uh, with the Medusas then. They're just doing some really good damage to the Chaos Knights. Oh, another big shot, and they're getting chipped out. Uh, they're slowly getting chipped down. Chaos Knights now at the back there being tied down by Black uh, by Dark Raiders, but uh, Gaze of Fate pinning down the Blood Wreck Medusa. Screamers contemplated to dive down to the Medusa, but decided against it with the Koa Knights so close by. But Crows of Cain are now here to tie them down. They're being slowed down by the counter attack while a bit of a pendulum will be wrecking some of these. Uh, Black Aquasiers. Ooh, looks like a Soul Stealer is draining the health of all these units in the vicinity. And yeah. The Marauders are getting broken apart pretty badly by the Black Aquasiers, uh, the Koa Knights, and the Terror of the Supreme Sorcerers of Dark Magic, who is also diving down just fighting against the Cheap Chaff Marauders. At the back there, Soul Grinder continues to shoot, but I don't think it matters too much here. Oh, another very nice blue fire chipping away the health of Blood Wreck Medusa. Now that uh, Kairos no longer has regrowth, he is not able to heal up the Blood Knights, uh, the Chaos Knights anymore, and they are taking a lot of damage throughout these, this engagement, even against non uh, non armor piercing, non anti large Black Aquasis. But here come. But there are indeed some Koan Knights dragging them down with those melee attacks. So, yeah, over time they're taking more and more damage. Balance of Power is in the Dark Elves' favor as the Marauder front line crumbled and, and the back line, uh, the mobility of Teenage Art is taking more and more damage right now. Another shot from the Soul Stealer, actually doing some friendly fire against the Koan Knights, chipping away the health of the Blood Wreck Medusa as well. Soul Stealer once again draining the health of all these Chaos Knights, doing some really good damage and healing the Blood Super, uh, Supreme Sorceress of Soul Stealer. Not that she needs any healing, but damage would be good in this scenario. Just working down the last bit of the Chaos Knights. Kairos still flying around, but honestly, I he's not doing that much. He did some really good damage against the Medusa with the Blue Fires, but that's basically it. He needs to dive down and fight somewhere, but right now the Soul Grinder is dragged into melee combat. The shots are not exactly useful now since he, he can't actually shoot anymore and uh he will get swarmed but yeah koa knights now going after the chaos knights of teenge and uh they're swarming the soul grinder and the koa knights oh they're trying to support the uh the soul grinder but the koa knights are just fighting with spear support and uh, more koa knights are in a little bit of um Pendulum there, doing some damage to the Black Aqua Sails, but that doesn't really matter that much. As their formation is a bit messed up, so the Wind Spell doesn't really do much damage while Chaos Knight and the Soul Grinder are slowly being worked down. Yeah, they're just taking more and more damage in this melee grind. Soul Grinder, for some reason, not taking that much damage despite being surrounded by so much anti lodge, but yeah, another Soul Stealer, everything got drained into army losses, and that shall be game. In hindsight, I should have just gotten less Screamers and invested in the amount, max amount of Sendigos over Chaos Knights. Perhaps, actually. If you remember, uh, Sipa went going with the Tinge build. He just went like Sendigos and Sendigos and more Sendigos with the Beastmen. Of course, you can't do that with the Tinge army, but Sendigos in general plus more Furies probably would have been nice. But uh, Wait, no, not Furies. But yeah, just more Sendigos would have been nice, honestly. And a ton more of firepower? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe regular? Regular Chaos Warriors might be good? I don't know. But yeah, overall, the blue fires were great against Medusa, though. Um, combined with the Soul Grinder, they did some good damage to Medusas, but the Cold One Knights actually did uh, got back their worth in this battle. And uh, of course, Soul Stealer, as always, really good. And uh, yeah, the Marauder Frontline just got ran over. Straight up ran over. By all the anti infantry and uh, heavy cavalry.
Okay, fuck it. I'm, I'm, I might have to just lower some of the settings. Ah, this. This is probably draining my CPU. Mm, yeah, let's let's see if this works. Uh, anyways, that is game for Sipa versus Borin. Try and changing the portable quality to two D. Oh uh, yeah, actually, let me just do that. In that case, I might just turn on the like. I feel like the. The close simulation doesn't do much, so I'll just do that. Turn that back on in case we need to zoom in and look the close flopping around a bit. Anyways, Kizla versus Dark Elves between Pigman and Captain Tellus. Cold ones I find hard to get value of most of the time. Ah. Yeah, cold ones doesn't have like Cold Cavalry generally have pretty poor stats for the amount of money they cost. So, whenever they just charge into melee, they just don't trade well. And as a result, they just took more damage and just get dies. So, like, it's... Coin Cavalry doesn't help that much. Okay, let's see. Okay, seems like it works now. Um, the temperature stabilizes at like 80-ish, which is uh, 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 acceptable. Okay, cool. For the army builds here, we have a line of uh, Kislevite. Uh, okay, on this side for the Kislevs, Kislevites, we have a line of Kislevite warriors, basically an entire melee front line there, backed up by some ice gods. Oh, Pac-Man going for Kislev actually, uh, versus Dark Elves played by Captain Tellus. And uh, further back there, Ice Guards with Swords. Uh, it's just three Ice Guards with Swords. And uh, Oath Brothers of Tor, some Griffin Legion, and uh, actually two Griffin Legions on both sides. We also have a Low Grom. The Low Grom ready to shoot things. Ah, oh, why are there so many duplicate names? Low Grom, Grom the Pont. Like, god damn it. Anyways, um. Like, come on, find a better name for your stuff, man. CA or Games Workshop, either one. Um, Patriarch and supporting the army with a Solex Lullaby and Solex Lullaby only, probably just gonna be a bear blob. I switch off ice as usual. Um, eh, not as usual, but like, hey, hey, I switch off ice with a uh, no mount. Frost Blades for better melee stats and Ice Sheet to control enemy movement. Ice Maidens Kiss for a bit more of an area of effect damage to enemy chaff. Now for the Dark Elves, a wide front line of Bleak Swords and some Dread Spears. At the back there, more Dread Spears, a couple of Shades, and uh, two Medusa, two Blood Rank Medusas. Why are there so many double Medusas in this game? More Dark Riders, two Dark Riders on the flanks, and then Marlis Dark Blade leading the army, Sorcerers of Fire, and Dread Spears. That's it for army builds. Um, oh yeah, and Sorcerers of Fire with Burning Head, I assume. Yeah, Burning Head only. I guess just to work through the Kislevite Warriors, though I don't think that's exactly the most cost-efficient way to do it, because they can still hold the line with Barrel Blood. Anyways, Griffin Legion, glorious charge into the Bleak Swords, doing maximum contact damage with uh, a quarter of the HP gone. But we do sell our counter-firing, trying to just work down these mobility, and oh, this is bad. Shade's getting charged by the Griffin Legion, taking a lot of damage in the process, and because they have they're moving and they have a loose formation. They just take more damage from the charge. These guys even getting rear charge. Oh, oh no. Two expensive armor piercing ca um, missile units are out, are offline very soon into battle. They are attempting a burning head to stem the tide, but I, I'm afraid that's gonna probably do more. Oh, it actually routes, shatters the shades unit. Oh, this is bad. Oh. The Griffin, one of the Griffin Legion is terror routed by the Medusa, but this is worth it. While the Medusas are distracted, the little Grom is just continuously pummeling these monsters. 
doing some noticeable damage already while the Gryphon Legion continues to charge. Ooh, this is painful. This is rather painful. Bleak Swords are still... They are not actually getting into melee yet, because the Gryphon Legion, despite getting routed, they are doing maximum, maximum disruption to the Dark Elf formations. Just running through all these Bleak Swords unopposed, and because the Dark Riders are all out on the flanks, there's no mass to counteract these heavy cavalry. Dark, uh, Dark Elf infantry, because elves are lighter, they just generally don't have mass to stop these cavalry. And the Gryphon Legion are just able to just push straight through and uh, return back to the protection of the Kislevite Warriors. While the Blood Rig Medusa down to half health, the shades tattered, um, the other one completely shattered, and uh, what, where is the other Medusa? The, the, this Medusa also 20% uh, HP gone, so things are not looking great already for the Dark Elves at the very start of the game. Ice Sheet there, slowing down enemy advances. All on the flanks there, um, Bleak Swords moving up. Hold on, excuse me for a second there. Okay. Bleak Swords moving up, but uh, they are trying to get into melee combat, but the Kislevite Warriors will be holding them back. Uh, and at this point, the <laughs> Dark Elves decide to throw the towel. Yeah, the Burning Head was a bit of a uh, panic cast for sure. Oh man, the Little Grom doing a lot of damage and the Oath Brothers barely seen any action. The Gryphon Legion just did so much dis disruption, man. Just ruining all the back line. <laughs> finishing off both of the Shade units, or at least almost finishing off both of the Shade units. And uh, the rest of the Bleak Sword strategy simply do not have enough push. Doesn't have enough punch to get through the Kislevite Warriors before they got shot to pieces by the um, Ice Guards. It's, it's, it's a brutal game. This game was quite brutal. For the... Yeah, for the Kislevite. Uh, for the Dark Elves. Alright, hold on. Invading, sharpening. Maybe I'll turn stuff off a bit more. Eh, yeah, nah, I'll just leave it as is. Uh, anyways. It was a very devastating cap, cap play for sure. Uh, this one we've seen it. Uh, yep, seen it as well. Ooh, Pikman going Tinge versus. Uh, oh, Cuban Boy going Beastman versus. Um. Versus Demons of Chaos. Lack of mobility really bit Talus in the end. I don't think it's lack of mobility, but more like the misplacement of mobility. He had Dark Riders. He could have sent in the Dark Riders to stem the tide of uh, Gryphon Legion, but they were deployed way too far from counteracting the Gryphon Legion. And Pikmin exploited that weakness and got some really good value out of the fight. So yeah, that was very unfortunate. Um, okay, two more battles left, and uh, this is Human Boy versus Pigment. Ah, I'm out of tea. All right, back to water, I suppose. But yeah, Human Boy going for Beastman. A lot of. Wait, what? 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 I thought you can only bring four marked units. No. What? Okay, four Sangors and then two more. Huh. Four Tangors and then two Zantagors. Anyways. Um, now, for the army build. Oh, Beastman has no mark mechanic. I guess they can only bring four Tangors and four uh, Zantagors, I suppose. So there's that. But anyways, Beastman, four Zangors in the front line, and then the second line of a few, four Angor Spears, three, five more Angor Raiders, and then four, five, five Sandigors. 
two Dantigors and then two Sandigors and one more Sons of Goros. With the magic attacks of Sons of Goros, it's definitely worth it against the physical resistance of all these demons of chaos. Leading the army, Malagor the Dark Omen with Flock of Doom and Doom and Darkness. Interesting spell, but I can see why they're just trying to crush the leadership of the demons and then send them into the Shadow Realm with that uh, demon insta demonic instability. For the other side of the battlefield, Dem Demons of Chaos, um, Shrieking Sky Rays already moving close to use that uh, wind spell, uh, explosion ability against the, the Lamprey's bait against the uh, Angor Raiders. And then a front line of Plague Bearers of Nurgle for a sturdier front line back line of a ton of horrors, pink horrors, and chromatic abominations, and also the sour gut. Further back there, Hounds of the Blood Hunt and two more Flash Hounds. Leading the army, a Plague Papa, Exalted Great and Clean One. And uh, yeah, that's about it for army builds. Now the Shirking Sky Rays doing a little bit of cheeky explosion against the enemy backline, blasting some of the Angor Raiders, and now they're falling back. While the Plague Bearers and all and Co are uh, moving up, Plague Bearers and Company, um, Pink Horrors are moving up, readying to shoot. But I don't think they're gonna have a good missile trade here because the Angor Raiders are gonna just move in and start shooting them back. They do have a bit more range than the Angor Raiders, so I guess there's that. Plague Bearers are moving up and they should be able to hold against the um, Zangors okay. Not the greatest um, trade since their physical resistance means nothing against the... Oh, Zangors don't have magic attacks. Interesting. So the Zangors are taking... are not exactly having the best trade here. Plague Bearers will hold. But here comes the Zantigors, who does have magic attacks. Wait, why did the Zangors not... I must be shift... It must, I must be looking at the wrong unit earlier then. The Zangors do have magic attacks and they're trading well into the Plague Bearers. Oh, wait. Oh, the Hounds of the Blood Hunt were fighting earlier and uh, they took away the magic attacks of something. So the Zang Zangors lost their magic attack for a bit or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, now the Hounds of the Blood Hunt are completely collapsed by a bunch of Santagors there. So not great for the Beastmen. Uh, not great for the Demons of Chaos as the only way to remove magic attack has been dealt with as they're entering demonic instability. On the right flank, Flash Hounds are also collapsed by a ton of Santigos and Dantigos. And uh, the front line, Plague Bearers are holding, but here comes another unit of uh, Zangors, slowly grinding them down. Oh no, the, what happened? Oh, the Great One, Killing One, got shredded by the Angor Raiders. Quickly entering demonic instability, especially the Doom and Darkness, crushing its leadership. And the Exalted Great Unclean One, despite the relentless rage holding up its leadership, it has entered into the unlimited. <laughs> oh, it has entered into. Uh, yeah, oh no. It has. Like, the Unbreakable doesn't actually push your leadership to 100. It actually locks down your leadership. It pushes your leadership into 100, but locks your uh, leadership status now down to whatever you are in. So, if you're terrified, you're locked down in terror. If you're crumbling, you're locked down in crumbling, and that was not able to save. Uh, yeah, it was not able to save the Great Unclean One with the Relentless Rage. After the Great Unclean One died, there's little help for the um, Demons of Chaos to hold the line, and uh, yeah, they're just dying in flocks now. Yeah, Sons of Goros getting pushed back, but the rest of the Demons of Chaos units are all compromised. All the Pink Horrors are dragged into melee as the Angors and Zangors are slowly hacking them down. Um, their missiles are not enough to change, change uh, are not enough to turn the table now. While the mobility of the demons are, uh, yeah, they're not gonna turn the table around as well. They can probably disrupt some of the Angor Raiders, but the rest of the infantry can just outtrade them in straight melee fights. While Malagor can still drop down some more Flock of Dooms to drain them away, and more importantly, Doom on Darkness just to put them into Demonic Instability, pushing them further, uh, pushing them into crumbling territory, fading territory even earlier than expected. So there goes all the Demon units, and that is the end of the chaos. <laughs> the Great Unclean One taking an early bath. But yeah, overall, 
I do like the Doom and Darkness tech against the demons really much. Like, I, I'm already a big fan of, like, leadership debuff spells in general. Against the demons, though, it's it's working really well as well. Just crushing the leadership of the demons and then forcing them into early... Um, early fading. But yeah, oh... Oh boy. The Angor Raider has got a lot of damage shooting up the Great Unclean one. And the Great Unclean one, uh, yeah, I gained so much missiles. He was not able, he did not stand a single chance. Ugh. Especially the Great Unclean one, unlike Kugath, does not have much armor. Malogor also has minus four leadership. I did not notice that. That is huge then. Okay, that, that makes sense why um, Malogor and Doom and Darkness work so well. Yeah, but the rest, the Plague Bearers held for a considerable amount of time, but against the magic damage and, and Zangos, they just didn't trade too well. Anyways, um, let me just drink some more water. But uh, for this last battle, I heard it is a super long one. So get ready, boys. <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a long cast. We might do some fast forward depending on the battle, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Now, for the army built here, we have a high elf. Okay, high elf, uh, Olaf the Moose, I think. Yeah, Olaf the Moose versus, um, yeah, Olaf the Moose as high elves versus Mr. Teufel as the Warriors of Chaos. A front line of uh, spears on the high elf side, a staunch line of spears, a second line of Loven Sea God and Sisters of Avalon, more Loven Sea God guarding the rear in the skies, three very strong single entities there, two arcane phoenixes, and one moon dragon with a high mage on top. For the other, wait, is there any mobility? Nope. For the other side of the battlefield, Warriors of Chaos, a front line of Marauders, a second line of, oh, Arcanum forging already drain, oh no, Forbidden Rod. Draining the health of Chaos Sorcerer of Death, trying to get more magic while using healing elixirs to replenish the missing health. While at the same time, Chaos Warriors, a lot of shield did infantry to absorb enemy missiles. And uh, in the forest, a bunch of Chaos Knights with lances and Chaos Chariots with Chaos Warhounds of Poison readying to run down enemy units. Another Chaos. Wait, hold on a second. You can deploy a Chaos Warhound in here? Interesting. In a high elf castle, there stands a warhound right at the doorway. And it's gonna run out. It, I've never seen people deploying in there, but it's funny. Uh, but yeah, anyways, war, uh, Chaos Knights with lances ready to run down enemy archers and whatnot. But at the same at the same time, the front line, the uh, marauders are getting hit hard by all those archer line, archer fire. And now the sisters of Avalon are aiming down at the Chaos Sorcerer of Death. But there are two casters on the field, so losing the death caster isn't exactly the end of the world. If anything, the sisters of Avalon should be aiming at Fet Festus the Leech Lord instead. Just trying to if anything should be they should be taking out the healing. But alas they try to deal with the death caster instead. But right now Chaos Knights with Lances are moving towards the back line and the Arcane Phoenixes are trying desperately to shut them down or at least slow down their pushes. But right now, there's just too much mobility for the High Elves to deal with. These Chaos Knights are circling around. They're taking a lot of damage from the Chaos Knights with Lances, but Warhounds are moving in, and these Chaos Knights should be able to get into melee combat no problem at all and run down the Sisters of Avalon, especially Festus is dropping down Fleshy Abundance on them. Of course, the fire damage on the Sisters of Avalon will slow down their healing and make their replenishment less effective, but they're getting into the melee combat alive and will be running down the Sisters of Avalon. The Arcane Phoenixes are in combat trying to work down the Chaos Knights, but the front line of the Spears are collapsing due to the consistent streams of corruption whittling down their health and the Chaos Warriors out trading the Spears. Just shooting heavy infantry is just too much for the High Elves to deal with if they don't have Sword Masters. And honestly, in this meta, you don't really see Sword Masters. Anyways, Arcane Phoenixes 
do have a tool to deal with armored infantry and that is their vortex the fiery rebirth no not not, not, not that the uh, ember storm ability whittling down their health with that aoe damage but overall the archer lines have been compromised and the sisters of avalorans are being pushed back these chaos knights needs to start keep chasing these uh, sisters of avalon put their pressure up making sure the um, armor piercing firepower cannot return Festus continues to fight and is he on the Mortis engine? Yes, the Harbinger of Pestilence, the Mortis engine in fact since he is so very healthy right now might as well just keep draining the health of the high elf units away. I missed the aspiring champions in the front line. Wow, I should not have missed that but yeah I did. Anyways, aspiring champions are moving into combat and they should be able to fight through the sisters of Avalon just fine with their impressive melee stats and also splash damage. Plus, with the Warhounds supporting, they have little issue dealing with the High Elf Archers. At the back there, Arcane Phoenix is getting pinned down by the Chaos Knight and Festus moving in and the Death Sorcerer moving in as well. A very nice Ember Storm here, hitting both the Chaos Knights and the Warhounds, draining their health away. Though the Loth and Sea God are getting less and less health, but a very nice breath attack annihilating these Chaos Knights. This is where uh, healing elixir is being healthy. Uh, yeah, healing elixir would be useful right now. Just slowly replenishing the health of surrounding units while Wolfestus is taking quite a bit of damage. This might be a time to switch over to the drain instead. But anyways, the um, aspiring champions needs to come back and save their uh, leash lord. Not the leech lord, but the leash lord. Uh, anyways, chaos knights of lances. They're charging into spears. Their impact damage is slowly whittling down their health and uh, in whittling down the spear line's health. But the hero hammer might be a bit much for the chaos, uh, for the army of chaos to deal with. Another ember storm, but it's not really doing much against the aspiring champions other than slowing down their healing. Fest is still fighting, just fine. Yeah. While the aspiring champions um, will be guarding the guarding the hero hammer, healing Alexis continues to. Heal up the. Oh, it's gonna be a bit of grind here. We'll go fast forward. Healing Alexis continues to heal up the characters and the aspiring champion while the Chaos Warriors and company are regrouping. Chaos Knights with Lances, they now have quite a bit of health now 25 unit models and uh, around a quarter of their HP left, all thanks to the Festus healing. And the healing continues to replenish the aspiring champion's HP. Now Festus is moving over to top up the health of the Chaos Knight. Uh, while the Warhounds fulfilling the attacking rule by attacking all these routed um, high elf units. Now they are trying to move over to hit up the spears over there to, um, yeah, to fulfill the attacking rule. But the hero hammer dives in. Oh my god. A, a Damaging, a devastating Ember Storm hitting so many Chaos Infantry and the Moon Dragon taking a few huge chunks of big bite on the Archmage of High Magic uh, on the on the Death Sorcerer. It's a very good damage done, but Festus continues to fight on with the healing, especially a big fleshy abundance keeping everything in the vicinity topped up with health. But the thing is, they just don't have any good answers against single entities. The Chaos Knights with Lances are keeping the um, High Mage grounded though and continues to chip away her health but the rest of the infantry are just not able to catch up and keep the pressure on while the High Mage retreats into the forest as the Arcane Phoenixes are slowly whittling down the Chaos Warrior's health. Now oh okay this is a bit dangerous for the High Elves as the High Mage was temporarily pinned down by the Chaos Knight and some of these war hounds. She is continuously taking damage while the war, uh, warriors are distracting the arcane phoenixes. Uh, is this warriors of chaos or Nurgle? This is warriors of chaos. These are regular warriors, and uh, and yeah, now the arcane phoenixes, noticing that the archmage is in a bit of a pickle, decided to come back in and maybe help out their lord. Chaos Knights continues to chase, but the terror on the dragon and the arcane phoenixes combined with the melee attacks might just be able to rout them off. Now Festus is returning, but Arcane Phoenixes and the High Mage's presence might be a bit much for these um, for these Chaos Knights. And once the Chaos Knights routes the army, uh, oh, 
The Kill Soul Sorcerer of Death only is here just for the... <laughs> it's just a living battery. Anyways, uh, it's gonna be a bit of a grind fight now that only infantry are left and a, and a few Chaos Knights. But anyways, the dragon is taking more and more damage though, but uh, more and more Ember Storm just drops in. All the Ember Storms are pretty much used up though, as they have used. And But they did do a lot of damage. 2600 gold worth of damage, uh, worth of damage value on the Arcane Phoenix. Uh, what is the other? Uh, okay, what is the other one? 2,000 damage on the other one as well. They're doing a lot of damage with the Ember Storms, but uh, without the Ember Storms, now that they used up all of that, they don't really have a good way to clear out enemy infantry, which can be a problem here. As the aspiring champions are and the warriors are all receiving continuous healing, although the Marauders are terrified, though they're terrified towards the wrong direction, so they're not getting route off the map, neither are these Warhounds. Like... They're running away from the enemies, right? Oh, never mind. They're, they're shattered. They're running away from the enemies, right? If they can just... So... They're moving away from the enemies who are uh, between them and the white line. So they're just moving away from the white line at that point. But anyways, the Chaos Sorcerer of Death is, uh, is a living battery. So he's just keep using Forbidden Rod to get more Winds of Magic reserved for the, um, for the Warriors, for the Chaos Army. Imagine if Nurgle gets their own Aspiring Champions RR in the DLC. Oh, I don't want to imagine that. That's going to be one tough nut to crack. Those are going to be some tough mother sons of bitches. Um, but yeah, right now it's just a grindy fight now. Three single entities versus a <laughs> an unholy blob of infantry. Uh, look at this unholy blob of Chaos Warriors and Aspiring Champions all just fighting together. And now they're just trying to grind down whatever single entities come their way. And the High Elves simply do not have any ways to deal with that <laughs> they don't have any good cost efficient way to like punish this blob now so now that all their amber storms and breath attacks are used up this is an unholy blob of <laughs> it's hero hammer versus healing blob the ultimate cheese the ultimate melee unit cheese on both sides who would win the single entity blob or the healing blob i mean both has healing but the healing this is passive healing <laughs> The passive healing blob. <laughs> uh, the one thing to note is that the dragon is not great in fighting in blobs like these. <laughs> I think you can play the uh, ultimate cancer. I think you can play at four times speed now on. Uh, uh, but I enjoy watching everyone suffer in this. But uh, it, it it is it is a <laughs> look at how look at how dense this blob is. It's just a one on the only blob of infantry just gathering together. Uh, aspiring champions though. They still haven't suffered a single death, so they're fighting. They're fighting. Wait, I'm, I'm, I'm just... Wait, what, what are they doing? Oh, they're moving towards the spears. Okay, that, that has a plainly attacking role. I, I don't mind that, honestly. Oh, also, Festus is casting random spells? Uh, he's not... What? I guess he's just casting the Stream of Corruption to whittle down enemy units. While at the same time, he doesn't have enough reserves to cast uh, Fleshy Abundance anymore. So he's just like trying to use the passive heal to top up all the stuff around him while his units grind through enemy spears. Uh, we're, we're just gonna four times this one. Uh, spears are getting whittled down, but warriors are still very much healthy because of the healing Alex's. Not even the flaming attacks is enough to like uh, counteract the healing fast enough. So yeah, the, uh, the Arcane Phoenixes will receive more I'm Maybe perhaps the high mage doesn't have any more apotheosis, so yeah, maybe he can't, she can't get any more healing for the high of single entities. And because of all the grindy healing, <laughs> the chaos warriors are slowly but surely <laughs> cutting down the arcane phoenixes. One of them goes down. The high elf, the high mage needs to do more cycle charging, and she is doing it. And that is putting in more damage on the Chaos Warriors, but is it enough? Oh, wait! One of the... The Arcane Phoenix got a rebirth. Got a fiery rebirth, and that explosion damage actually worked against... Oh, no. Worked against the High Elves. Unfortunately, though, the Archmage of High Magic got... Got grind down for a bit there, and got uh, pushed off. But now it's back to the grind. We're on the 20 minute plus mark. Oh, that explains why... That explains why... <laughs> Olaf and Mr. Toivo took so long, and uh, 
and um, Fortune Warrior had to wait, and uh, he just had to, <laughs> and unfortunately he had to, um, yeah, he had to leave. But uh, <laughs> it's grinding. The grind is still on. I saw all of the moves. I still had 15 wins on magic at that point, but I had to save it to keep the word safe passive active. Word safe passive. Wait, what word safe passive? What word safe passive? I'm not sure what we're safe. Uh, oh no 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 no! Oh, it's it's the high archmage high, high of high magic. Oh, I don't know if the war safe passive is worth it. Oh, for the arcane phoenixes. For arcane phoenixes? Hold on. Oh yeah, this. I don't think it actually worked here. I don't see any word save actually. Or maybe he used up some of the magic to heal. But uh, at this point. This Arcane Phoenix is also going down, and there's no Fiery Rebirth, just a death in explosion. Did some damage to the Chaos Warriors though, and the Chaos Warriors are getting low. A dive from, oh yeah, the, he used up the, some of... Oh, and 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 Festus switched over to the Mortis Engine, in fact, and draining the health of all the high health units. Yeah. We're reaching the 24 minute mark now, almost. Can we reach the 25 minute mark? Anyways, it doesn't matter. And another Apple Theos is healing the Archmage of High Magic, getting. trying to get re push her towards the heal cap. The Warriors of Chaos are still holding on. And uh, one of them are Terror. No, nope, no, no, they're still holding, they're still holding, they're still holding. Um, but uh, Festus is getting low. Might. Oh, it's, it's uh, actually normal routed. Balance of Fire is moving towards the middle here. And uh, Festus is getting pushed off. Oh, a big hit on onto Festus. Now the Warriors of Chaos, if they lose their Leech Lord or Leech Lord, same thing, um, they will not be able to hold their leadership together with the Death, De uh, Lord Death, uh, Lord Death debuff. And uh, another few big hits from the Archmage. Finally, Festus has been slain. But the Encourage Aura from the Aspiring Champions is barely keeping these Chaos Warriors in the fight. So they are still fighting, but I don't think they have a. Yeah. Oh, we're approaching the 25 minute mark now. Oh boy. Uh, but yeah, the Arcane Phoenix is getting low as well. But here comes a rear charge from the High, Dra High Dragon. And that terror routes and actually normal routes the um, Chaos Warriors. The Aspiring Champion are still fighting, but can they fight till the end? They cannot. Another, another fiery rebirth from that one, Arcane Phoenix. That would be way more useful on the other one, the dead one. But alas, that is the end of this long grind <laughs> and it's probably the last very last fight on the stream and yeah gg to both players here <laughs> 4k worth of damage value on one arcane phoenix almost uh, 3 and uh, 3800 k uh damage on the other arcane phoenix as well and then 4000 damage on the, these high elves uh, on the high high archmage they basically killed <laughs> the Warriors of Chaos army twice over at that point <laughs> and a bunch of other more damage from the from the sisters uh, so of Avalorn and rest of the High of Infantry but anyways the Hero Hammer has managed to win the day with the sheer amount of healing available to High Elves with their Apotheosis, fire, Fiery Rebirth and all the AOE damage from the Ember Storm and Breath Attacks the um, Chaos Knights did some good work though and Festus the Leech Lord did some really good damage. Oh, this is the strongest Aspiring Champions I've ever seen. 2,300 gold worth of damage value. Maybe I should pair them with Festus more. This is insane. Those champs will, will, were the bane of my existence. Indeed. They will tell this tale to their grandchild. That was some epic... Yeah. Crown Metal, that was some epic Aspiring Champions play. Yeah, that is an over 25 minutes time of battle. Chaos Warriors did their best, and the Aspiring Champions also did a lot of put a lot of hurt into the enemy units. Um, the Chaos Sorcerer, uh, Sorcerer of Death is basically a human battery of Winds of Magic. Keeps sacrificing himself for more Forbidden Rot cast, and uh, the rest of the army not doing too well. But man, that Aspiring Champion was epic. I appreciate the Aspiring Champion honestly. Um, Definitely a super underrated unit. And yeah, that's it for today's stream. I hope you all enjoy this, all the fun games in the battle. And I'm super, uh, 
a big shout out to all the players who joined in this Friday night fight. I hope I can uh, host another one next Friday. And let's see what happens next week. Um, if I'm hosting one next Friday, I'll be making another announcement around Monday or Tuesday. So do, do, do join the Night Crew Clan Discord if you're not already in there. And uh, stay uh, keep an eye out on uh, new announcements about new... Um, yeah, new new games and new tournaments. Even if I'm not uh, setting up a tournament, I there will be somebody else setting up other tournaments, I assume. So yeah, do, so do keep an eye out for uh, tournament announcements. And uh, if you want to play more multiplayer, yeah, join it. Keep an eye out for new announcements and uh, join the uh, join the tournaments when you have time. And yeah, that's it for today's stream. I hope everyone enjoy all the um, games there, either either watching it or uh, playing in it. But either ways, I hope you all enjoy the action. And yeah, big thanks to everyone playing. Uh, congratulations to Human Boy for winning this tournament. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich signing out. Oh, Tequila says that you're doing another single Lord tournament. I'll try to join then. Yeah. Anyways, also like subscribe to Tequila Sunset if you haven't already done so. He is hosting more tournaments, doing some really nice videos, discovering some funny uh, details, funny information, tips, and uh, bugs about Total War Warhammer, um, Total War Warhammer multiplayer. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Edge signing out.